We're doing a Diablo 4 podcast today with Zizarain, Kriparian, and Woody Joe. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Diablo 4 podcast. With me today is Asmongold, Crip, and Woody Joe. Thank you all for joining me here today. Thanks for having us. I started, I started calling a, the uh, podcast The Prime Evils. I figured Asmongold oh, can be Lilith. Okay, I mean, all right, this, that's fine. Is this like a democratic election? Is we, I mean, I've we... dressed up like a girl before. It's fine. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Anything for the viewers. <laughs> that was good. Uh, I wanted to start off with just like, like a quick what you've been playing, like hardcore, softcore, and, and like what mm -hmm. build you've been playing. Um, we can start with uh, Woody. Yeah, I started the season with Rogue. I guess that comes as no surprise. I like Rogue a lot. And uh, I started with testing blades for the race on hardcore. That was a lot of fun. And after that, I respect the rate of arrows, which is like the the big new thing on Rogue this season, I would say. And that was that was really cool. Actually, I had a lot of fun of that. Right now, I also like I'm just respecting and experimenting with the new uniques. There's a lot of things to explore, which I have fun with. Yeah. Rip. Um. Well, I started off playing the Golem Necro because Minion Necro and especially Golem got a lot of buffs, and I was actually playing a golem necro before all of those buffs so it's like hey this build's gonna do like seven times more damage and i'm like well, it's already pretty good and then they nerf like crit scaling it's like well you can't even scale minions crit so that's just perfect mm. um so that build is way way better than it was before but it's still yeah minion ai things i got it to 100 and killed uber bosses though Nice. And I got a few drops that led me to play a Firewall Sork with the X-Fall Ring. So I'm like level 98 and three bars now. So wow. probably by the end of the podcast, I'll be 100. For the oh, yeah, you're time. playing right now. I Friday. You. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Asmin, what about you? Oh, I, I got level 100 on a Sork. I'm playing that Ball Lightning. I killed Uber Lilith for the first time. And um, it was pretty easy. She didn't do anything. And so it made it a lot easier. And uh, besides that, let me think. What else really did I do? I did Durial. I've been trying to leech out some uh, Uber kills to get those uh, uniques and make sure I get all that. And I, yeah, I leveled all the way to 100 already. And it's been pretty fun. I've, I've enjoyed it. Awesome. That's really good. And then, Woody, you were first level 100 on Hercule, right? Uh, I wasn't the first first. I was uh, the first on solo, though, it seems. Oh, okay. uh, that was Oogie Boogie who was, um, he was a bit faster, like two hours faster, but he grouped with someone and then his, his teammate died. So he finished it solo, but I couldn't catch him. So. Oh, damn. <laughs> That's going to be interesting next time with um, Ladder in season three. It'll be yeah, a lot I'm of really fun. looking forward to that for sure. I really hope they add an actual solo cell phone mode because I hate, like, I'm not a big fan of self-imposed rules, but I also feel like self-imposed rules is how you get solo cell phone. But yeah, mm -hmm. kind of annoying. I mean... We have Rob That's doing a really weird. great job at, you know, forcing the devs to make solo cell phone mode. So <laughs> I'm not sure if you have been paying attention to, to Rob just leeching Duriel nonstop. Like he has like 500 kills or something. So. Wow. <laughs> have, they, have they said what they would do with like a, a leaderboard thing? Like I imagine if it's just levels, it's kind of lame. Yeah, I'm guessing they'll do a Nightmare Dungeon one, right? No, they oh, said they want to introduce a new system, like a new uh, game system. I imagine something like Rifts a bit in D3, and uh, that is going to be in like a leaderboard system as well. So right. they, they, we don't have the details, but something like that. Huh. And maybe they're going to do more stuff. I mean, they, they could do a thousand different things with leaderboards, right? They can even like add more leaderboards over the seasons. Yeah. I think they didn't want to add in leaderboards because they didn't want people to see how unbalanced the game was. Yeah, I mean, That's with all the busted, broken, bugged builds, like, I mean, it wouldn't really make sense anyway until, yeah, <laughs> they fix well, all that. Here, which is the Here's the thing, right? Is, like, everybody, like, anytime, how many of you guys have been accused of playing a broken build? Uh, yeah. Well, it depends. Usually you need, usually, okay, so if you're playing your own build that you made and chat's yeah. like, oh, your build's broken, that's, like, a good thing. Right. But then if, if you get it, like, certified, broken, rated by, like, mm -hmm. Reddit or, like, a content creator, then that's a bad thing, right? So yeah. you're, you're probably getting getting the negative side of that as one, because 
because Rax ousted your build as the most overpowered this league. But if you made that build for the first time, and then other people started copying you, then it's like, whoa, Asmo's build's broken, and then yeah. you know you're living you're living a high life. And that's what I thought too until I watched Rob one shot Uber Durial on a that four thing man is broken. Group. That is broken. I, I don't, yeah, that's the thing. I don't want to hear any more about how other people, my build is broken whenever I can see shit like that. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was playing like pen shot for a very long time just for like super good clear. And yeah. I was using items that everyone considers trash. Like, what's the bow I'm using? I was about, I'm about to call it Sky Force. Sky something? Wind Sky Force. Hunter? Yeah, I'm using oh, Sky I'm Hunter, under. which everyone's like, Sky Hunter's trash. And I'm like, what's not? You just don't know how to use it. Because I'm using it with Hemomancy, and I one-shot the entire screen with just the vampire ability. So I'm just like, I'm rolling through the instance. And like at one yeah. point, I was w almost one-shotting the elites. Um, and then, yeah, I had like no single target, though, for a very long time. And then I switched to Rapid Fire, and then I one-shot Lilith. Well, almost one-shot Lilith. I was, I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw your I saw your clips of uh, of what you linked to me. I'm like, look, looks pretty decent actually. I might as well playing some pen shot rapid fire right now. So I think we have a kind of similar thing, but I'm not yeah. using that bow. <laughs> I think rogue's like the most balanced. I mean, I think I think it was in season zero too. But typical like... rogue comment. Well, okay, so I'm usually <laughs> a sork main. I just love that you. I feel like you can do anything with rogue. You can do death trap. You can do rain of arrows. You can do okay. I mean, you can do a lot of builds. Whereas like on other things, I feel like you have less choice. I'm a rogue uh, person say... now. I have to say, Rogue definitely feels really strong right now. It was just like, you know, Rogue has like this this much smaller scaling curve than other classes. It's kind of like it starts decently high, it, it goes fast, and then it doesn't scale as crazy as like, you know, back then we had like Tornado Druids, you know, with like the, there was like yeah. cruising through T100 dun dungeons and stuff like that, right? We had Bone Spear, Necros, and all that. And Rogue never got to that level, but it was just like good all the way. And now, like, everything has been kind of, like, tuned down, but Rogue. And Rogue is, like, slowly creeping up as a result, I feel. Yeah. So Rogue is really strong now, I would say. But not, like, obscene, I think. It's just fun. Yeah. Although, people kept accusing me of using some sort of poison bug, but I don't think that works on my build. I don't even know what the poison bug is. Uh, there's, like, seven of those, but, yeah. <laughs> oh. I think that's, so like, you, a TB. You probably are using one of them. I know! <laughs> From what I understood, it's like when you attack like multiple times, but I only attack once. Yeah, it it has like the the biggest poison bug has to do with twisting blades, and you're not using that, so right, you're you're good. Yeah, you're yeah, ethical yeah, yeah. enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, there's been there's been a lot of changes in season two, so it's I do know I wish we had more stash tabs, but uh, we can talk a little bit about the season two changes. Like, how do you guys feel about the uh, the XP changes? It's very fast. I hit level 100 <laughs> before I got all of my uh, glyphs leveled up to 15. Yeah. Oh. It's well, extremely fast. I, I kind of see that. I kind of see that coming. So I just like when I was like 90, I'm like, why am I doing Helltide right now? Because in 10 levels, I can do Helltide after I hit 100, and I could get 925 loot from Helltide a lot easier, especially from the mobs that I kill for it. So around like 90. I stopped doing anything besides <laughs> Nightmare Dungeons, and I did like monsters that are 100 and higher in Nightmare Dungeons, so I could start getting my endgame gear. And then after I got 100, I went back to, to Helltide. So doing that, I got two glyphs to 21 and three at 15. Yeah. Wow. You played a lot. Yeah, I guess. In general, like it was kind of interesting to see like how much faster the race was. Like when, when launch came around, it was like four days. Yeah. It was like like roughly eighty hours or something. It was really close to eighty hours when I did like the first uh, like race to hundred, and then came season one. It was like almost half. It was like thirty eight or so, almost exactly half. And now we are again half of that this season. So it was literally like one session twenty. Like for me, it was yeah. twenty hours, you know? and that was it basically. And uh, it was it was very interesting to see, I want to say. And uh, I mean, they said it's forty percent faster, but it's way faster than that because I think a lot of people like you know. They, they were going like 40% faster from like the, the latest patch, but the latest patch had already introduced like a lot of stuff during season one, right? There was like two or three separate XP buffs during season yeah, one yeah. that most people just completely missed. And uh, now everyone was so taken by surprise how quick it is, I suppose. Yeah. It's also I, the... Uh, higher density. This, uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's what I was going to say. It's like the... Well, did you guys do like from one to 50? 
did you guys do the leveling areas like the new like kind of blood tide the green like, hell tide, uh, yeah. teal yeah the green yeah green hell tide basically <laughs> like that was so it was actually really good yeah i liked it it was like, so good. i liked it a yeah. lot me too i also did that actually instead of like mm -hmm. just domain hell grind i just went there and yeah. uh, it was super fun i i think it also it also feels good as a mechanic to um see that it's something that you can contribute to your end game character that you can start doing at like level five yeah right mm -hmm. like most most other mechanics you just can't approach them until yeah uh maybe maybe world tier three when you start doing like hell tide right yeah like that's that's the, the first thing that you contribute to your end game before season two but yeah with with the vampire zones it was pretty evident you do like one or two and it's like hey i'm gonna need a lot of this currency yeah yeah, yeah. no i i don't think i liked either xp i don't think i liked the before or the after it kind of made me appreciate just what most rpgs do which is like have a non-linear xp curve because what diablo 4 does i feel like 80 to 81 isn't a very different speed than 99 to 100 and i think i prefer when you get to like anywhere between 90 and 96 pretty fast and then the last four levels take a while and you have something to like grind and chew and there's not a like crazy good power behind that right it's just like an mm -hmm. achievement to get i really like that but like maybe getting to like 96 or 98 even like what takes level 100 now and then maybe twice that for level 100 without it being like a crazy reason to do it that i i think i prefer that it's hard to say because I feel like at a certain level, like some of the glyphs getting them up to 21 in the process of getting them all up to 21, you probably would have accrued enough experience to have gotten level 100 because like that's what it was for me, at least back in season one, is that even whenever I was level 100, I was like min maxing out a couple of extra glyphs, etc. So it wasn't really that big of a deal, but I would be okay if like there was a soft cap at let's say 95. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can always introduce a death penalty, right? <laughs> True. Uh oh, they will have to pay attention. True. I I don't. I'm not a huge. I don't really. Honestly, I don't really have any takes on softcore because I don't play softcore. So it's like they can do whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I did. I did. Like I said, really like the season mechanic though. I think it was really well done and added a lot. But. I'm also a little surprised. So at League Star, I don't know if you guys know this, but the Vampire Powers went past level three. And I wonder if that was like a really? last minute hotfix. Because I had a guy in my chat and what? actually several people that had some of the powers at level five and we didn't know how high they went. So they had he had spammed Hemomancy and his was doing 120% yeah. of his health as physical damage. And Wait, he was what? like, wow, was how it, high was it like was it like retroactively changed then? So he relogged and then and now it was capped at level three. <laughs> um so he was like, don't relog. And like I think I had one at level three and <laughs> moving towards level four. But um that makes me wonder if like the blood like rewards and stuff from the uh the board was supposed to keep going. Because I feel like the blood rewards don't make any sense, right? The last thing, or actually even the um what's it called? The season journey, the last reward is a shit ton of that blood. But there's no way you're getting all the way to the last part of the season journey without having maxed your without vampire powers. Much. Like, you max the vampire yeah. powers in, like, 12 hours, I'd say. So I think I... they didn't expect people to play the entire, like, leveling process in those, like, blood tides. Maybe. In, in the green hell tides, yeah. That might be why. That's, cer that's certainly part of it, but uh, I also think this may have been, like, a more localized bug, because, like... They like we had the like the delayed rollout of the season. We're just kind of skipping past that part, right? So I I think maybe some people were playing a few different like local patches at the time, uh, because I know a lot of people they went into like uh, dopamine tunnels or whatever. Yeah, I did. I just did the mechanic once, and I'm like, hey, it's pretty good. So I just did the mechanic. I did the mechanic the whole time, and none of my things went past three. And I doubt whoever was in your chat was doing it much faster than I was. Right. So I think I think it was just some people because they were just I think it was a real scramble on on day zero yeah. for them to, like, to get the league when out. They, when they previewed the patch, they, they I think they said that it's only going to level three. Like they they gave us the, the values of every level three power like mm -hmm. before the patch came out. So I think this was probably just some you know bug or something that they had right. like you know maybe internal data for higher levels and that somehow went to the lives. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
but um i i found like a lot of the rewards and awards like continuing to be the blood like really odd for something that maxes so fast and i mean it's good for your odds though you can make an right that's true that's true true it, yeah. it does make it better and like i think overall the bloods and being able to like level them up was kind of annoying because you would have to continue clicking it every single time it would be nice yeah. to do like you know basically the gotcha equivalent of a 10 pull right like just okay you just do 10 of them at a time let's just get this done and move on like i feel like it kind of became effectively a formality but overall, I thought that the the mechanic, and this is one thing I didn't like about the blood mechanic, is that leveling up the different little icons underneath the gear, the sigils that they had that you have to like match up for your blood powers, they became like a barrier for me wanting to use new gear. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to use new gear because, you know, like the hemomancy thing was like really strong for like pulling a bunch of mobs in and, you know, for leveling, that's really good. So I would have liked if kind of the costs scaled with like the level of them. So like maybe you wouldn't have to deal with like managing all of those like right early on. That's like kind of a minor thing that like you're probably only going to encounter in like the first two days of gameplay. But for me, it was an annoyance. Yeah. That's fair. I got so many of those I, things that it wasn't, I didn't have the same. I agree with Asmund, actually. I had the same problem when I was leveling up. I was like, hmm, He's I like really don't want to. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, pre-50 at least, they have, like, no materials. And it's just like, okay, I, mm -hmm. I do I really want to swap to this plus 300 armor chest now, but I lose my power. Like, it was also kind of some decision making, but it also felt kind of bad not equipping that high level gear. So, <laughs> I agree. I think my biggest issue this season was somehow Veiled Crystals. I was out of Veiled really? Crystals the entire season. I have 600 Forgotten Souls and 200 Veiled Crystals. I don't know what game you're That's playing. That's a lot of hell tides. I, I just, and everyone in my chat is like, why do you have so many uh, the yeah. Forgotten Souls? And I'm like, I don't know. I have no crystals. I have none. <laughs> I'm out the entire league. And I see the complaints all the time about Forgotten Souls. And I'm like, how are you guys getting crystals? What am I doing differently? I'm just not. I haven't done that many Nightmare Dungeons, but still. I, I just like I live in hell tide. Complaint. I heard from people as well, they're running out of crystals. And I'm sitting here, I have like 5,000 crystals. I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> are you so selling your gear? <laughs> well, that, that's the thing. So, like, do, do, Ziz, do you like not loot all the gear? Like, because usually whenever I do a nightmare dungeon, yeah, I have 3, especially like right early now. on, yeah, yeah, like I'll just loot everything and then just salvage after an entire run. Are you salvaging this? Yeah, I, think that might I be salvage a lot. Like a lot. I really? salvage everything. I have too much gold. Like I haven't been able to run out of gold. I don't cause... salvage blue stuff, but like which I you now I it tilts me to that I see blue stuff, but Yeah. People are saying you might be selling too much stuff if you're out of veiled crystals. I kind of feel that too, because mm. I experienced that. I didn't uh, sell anything the entire season. In preseason a bit and in, in season one I experienced a bit. But in this one, um I was always short on Forgotten Souls, so I wasn't able to reroll anything. And when I was approaching 100, I had like 200 million gold. <laughs> like, how much am like, I going to need to reroll? Like, I know they redid the system, but like, I, I, did... I feel like gold is no longer a limiting variable. Yeah, gold is crazy. Uh, um, I wouldn't say that, man. You can still ramp up the gold cost a lot. So yeah, I'm yeah. not sure if you get really unlucky, you get that it piece. Yeah, yeah, I have like that glove, man. It's like perfect. <laughs> and I'm trying to roll crit on it, and I can't get more than 4% crit. It's so sad. Oh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got pretty lucky with a lot like of my gear. Million. Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't done as many Nightmare Dungeons, probably. Like, I only got all my glyphs to 15, and then I've just been living in, like, Helltide, Green Helltide, uh, a lot of Whispers, and mostly focusing on, like, Duriel Farms. So I've just, every single time there's a Helltide, I've been doing that. And honestly, I kind of hate Helltide. Like, especially for yep. casual players. It's awful. I think they should... Even if they like keep the awards the exactly the same and don't make it two hell tides every two hours and make it one hell tide every hour, I have so many casual players in my chat that they have like maybe an hour here and there to play. If they log in and there's no hell tide, they can't do Duriel. Like they just can't do Duriel. So it's awful it's for like casual players. Chance, though, hell tide is like... it, there are too many things that you have to do in hell tide. You mm -hmm. need to get the uh, the stuff for summoning Duriel from hell tide. And you also need to get Helltide for Forgotten Souls. Yeah. So, like, it's, like, this massive bottleneck that... And it's also, like, I'll be real, doing the green Helltide, the new one, uh, for the seasonal mechanic, made me realize that Helltide sucks. 
because the new one is a thousand times better. Yeah. There's like these special rares that spawn <laughs> that drop better gear. They drop better stuff. They're just more interesting. There's yeah, more it added so to much do. to the There's game. I love density. it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And so then you go back and you play the old Helltide and it's like, ah, this isn't really so good. And now I have to get 300 of these twice. Oh, my God. It's, it's part of the pack size. It, you can't go down. You know, you're addicted. Yeah. You're addicted to pack yeah. size and you can't you can't take any steps back like last like preseason especially i thought the best mechanic in their entire game was helltide and i think they actually slightly increased the density since that version of the game mm. and now it just feels bad because everything else it's like pack mm -hmm. size it's clear yeah. speed yeah it, it would add a lot if it was constantly on because then like especially early game like obviously i i still feel like it needs more stuff at the end game because there's not that much to do right now there's like mostly just durial and lilith doesn't drop anything i wish lilith would get reworked actually to just be farmable like mephisto in d2 was a really good addition to any rpg but um yeah, yeah like it would be really good you could choose between red hell tide green hell tide nightmare dungeons or just xp spamming like dopamine tunnels and stuff then you actually have some good choice yeah that'd be really good and then world bosses every now and again and that's something I also really like. World Bosses was super worth it. I did every single one. Did not miss yep. one. Well, I got my weapon that it. I'm still using at 100 from the first World Boss I did in Tier 4. It was a good day. There you go. Yeah, very good day. And yeah, it dropped a um, super high level loot now. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So one thing I want to kind of touch up on, because uh, I, know, I know you guys are kind of information sponges. Maybe I missed it. But I know when they were talking about Season 1, they're like, here's a Season 1 mechanic, and after Season 1, we're going to throw it in the garbage. Now, they did that, but they, to my understanding, they didn't say that with Season 2. So are we expected that we have permanent vampire systems in the game forever here's, now? Here's something kind of interesting, is that whenever they did their last campfire... I actually asked it, and I asked a question in chat. I said, I'm never going to play Necromancer ever again unless you make autoplay Necromancer from season one baseline. Basically, that was the question. And it was formed basically in a statement. And mm -hmm. Joe Shelley, uh, you know, the game director, uh, actually tweeted at me and he said, I saw your question. Stay tuned for what's going to happen at BlizzCon. So I think that we could see some degree of like overlap and, uh, you know, like kind of implementation of these systems going into the base game, because I think that that's really where like Diablo like has the potential to like fall off versus PoE, especially because PoE has built up like such a foundation over the years of just systems that just got better and better and better over time. And even systems that weren't really that good, like Synthesis, for example, were still implemented into the game in more removed ways, like with Twisted Distant Memory and with like Cortex maps and having still the implicits that you can put on the gear. Like you still have Synthesis, but it's made in a way that makes sense for the current game. And I think that that's what Diablo needs to do. So the game doesn't just feel like the base game with a new flavor. And there's no sense of like, uh, like the game never becomes more robust or more interesting. It's just a new version of the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a huge problem that they had in Diablo 3 for the longest time until like exactly. very recently when it, when it actually started. Like the last few seasons in Diablo 3, they actually started like adding a few like new systems and they do it a little bit here and there. And it's not just only rifts and that stuff. So they did a good job there, and I think it's pretty obvious in Diablo 4 that they need to go down the same route as PoE with like implementing league mechanics or season mechanics as yes. like a current thing. And it's, they're doing that forward. a little bit already, right? Varshan is still here. Yeah. Varshan, yep. is like a is a is a permanent addition. So I wouldn't be surprised to actually see the vampire stuff in season three as well. But you know, maybe it's going to be similar to how Helltide works now. Eventually, it pops up somewhere. You know, it's not always there because the new season mechanic is somewhere, for example. And it's just like some other side thing that you can do and maybe get like a special reward there. And, you know, like maybe the vampire stuff is going to be very efficient to farm, you know, I don't know, certain elixirs or certain types of gear or whatever as like a, a side thing that you can do next to Helltide and next to dungeons and whatnot. And if they keep going forward like that, I think this is a pretty good solution. Yeah. I, I feel like just leaving the boss in doesn't really do it for me. Like leaving Varshan in and taking out literally everything else that doesn't do it for no, me. I agree. Like, I think you can I think slap like, okay, on the name, and I can just sit in all those mechanics and not care. Like, yeah, it's it's, it's hard though with like these like vampire knows. powers. I didn't play season one, but I think there was quite a lot of powers with malignant hearts and stuff there too. So keeping something like that every season in a game that's already struggling with power creep 
could be pretty dangerous too. Yeah, it's not so much so much about keeping the power creep, right? If they like, it's fine to remove the power creep and then maybe replace it with something else, or you know, not even have any power creep. You know, you can you can power creep in in diff different ways if you want. It doesn't have to be temporary. But uh, yeah, yeah, like, do we really want to keep million tunnels around in the game? Is the question. <laughs> I mean, they kept the boss at least. So I like that, that they kept the boss, but what would be so much better? It this would like double the league for me. Would be if killing Lord Zir and the Beast in Ice or whatever it's called would give Andariel fragments. So I could be like spamming Seer, Blood and Ice, Beast and Ice, and farming both Duriel and Andariel. That would have been like, oh my god, yes. Like, I would really mm -hmm. like if we had something like an Abyss Jewel socket from PoE and you could mm. use one of the malignant hearts that is kind of one of the more balanced ones right. instead of, you know, something else. I would like that a lot. That would be cool for sure. Like they yep. can react some of the powers. I also wouldn't be surprised to see like some of the powers come back, like the auto casting necro thing. Like that yeah. could be like a new unique item or something as well. Sure. You know, really. like not not like a power creep thing where it's just like for free, but you have to like trade, have like a trade off basically, and then you bring back like a favorite item basically that most people. Like. Yeah. I do kind of want to set the framework to. Um... Because I'm sure we've all been asked that. I'm sure we'll get to it. It's like, you know, how how do you, how much do you like Season 2 Crypt? Is it good? Is it bad? Should I come back? All that kind of stuff. I always kind of, at the back of my mind, compare the experience to PoE Leagues. Um, and I know that's maybe not the same for everyone here. M maybe it is the same for everyone here, but maybe not. Uh, just because that's like a good standard and not just for me personally, but I think it is kind of like the ARPG industry standard, which is why they explicitly mentioned that it's going to be a live service game. I think their goal is to at least meet that standard. So, yeah, I think that that perspective kind of kind of puts it in because for me, season two did actually deliver a lot on what I want out of a league in PoE. Like I think they they hit the notes pretty well. Yeah, I think it was good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I would say, like, what have I told people? I've told them, like, you know, if you should watch the game, make a decision for yourself, right? Like, should you play the game or not? But, like, if you've already bought the game and you own the game already, yeah, maybe try it out, you know, play it for a couple of hours. And if it sucks, then, oh, well, you wasted a couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah, I was usually, when people were asking me, people were like, it's worth coming back now. And I was like, you'll get between, like, 50 to 100 hours. Out of season two, for most people, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's just one season, right? And mm -hmm. then people ask, uh, can, "Will I really get my money's worth out of this game or something?" Like, always get this question, like, "Should I buy the game?" And, yeah, I mean, there's not much you can do wrong with ARPGs. I feel you know, even yeah. if if it's not in the perfect state right now, and you're know, like a super try hard blaster, you know, even then you're gonna you're gonna enjoy the game for a while, most likely. And the casuals, I mean, generally enjoy it. Anyway, I suppose, like most of them at least. So. Well, that, that's well, really the thing, right? Is like the game's made for casual players. Yeah, exactly. Oh, absolutely. So a lot of people, it's like that's also what a lot of people say, right? That this is really good for casuals. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I think most people just like it, even if they just never get to another 100 or something. You say there's, so. there's not a lot they could do wrong in the ARPG space, but I don't think people would exactly have that sentiment about season one. Well, it's more about like, True. I, I think games in general have incredible entertainment value. So it's like, I, I hate getting asked that question. It's like, people go to the cinema, right? Like insanely bad entertainment value. People what? go out to drink. Yeah. Spend a hundred dollars in one day. Just yeah. buying the, the same stuff that's at the store for 20 bucks. Yeah, what I are mean, they thinking? Games, games are so like good value. I generally, I feel like I have a very like high value threshold on my games. I want like at least one hour out of every dollar I spend. How many of my yeah, tests sure. said they want um, if one hour every three dollars they spend? And I'm like, dude, if I spend sixty dollars on a game and I get twenty hours, I'm pissed. But yeah, I hate this discussion. I mean, go to the park, okay? Like... <laughs> I think that it, it really depends, right? Because there's okay, some grandpa. people, th there's some people they can spend $70. It's not a big deal. 
you know, they have a good job, you know, they live in a good place, they're in a first world country, everything is good for them. And there's other people that have to save up money yeah. to buy $70, right? Buy somebody $70. So it's just that, like, you can't really tell somebody, is this worth it for you? Because That's hard. they're going into it from their own perspective, like completely from their own perspective. Absolutely. Everybody's, you know, yeah, everybody's value proposition is going to be different. Yeah. No, I mean, there were there were a lot of really good changes. I'm very happy with, like, mm -hmm. at least it's going in a good direction, even though, like, I would want more days out of it. I was hoping to get, like, a week, but I'm already pretty done. Like, my main goal was to get an Uber Unique, which I already got. Yeah. Um, which one did you get? I got uh, the Amdariel helmet. Ooh. Uh, are you going to use it? Are you going to make a build around it? No, I'm like... <laughs> See, that's, that's, the, that's the problem, because, like, I, I basically did exactly what you did, Ziz. I went and did Uber bosses, but then the items that I got off the Uber bosses really encouraged me to make another character, so I did. And then, honestly, added up together, yeah, I got about a week out of the league, but yeah, two two characters worth. Yeah. But a week out of the league, that's what it's, I expect from a league. It's not bad. For me, I, think so I, I just, uh, Andara's Massage wasn't that exciting for me, and I don't feel like, I think items need a little bit more excitement in D4. I was really excited when they were like, oh, we reworked unique items to make them more exciting. And the first thing they show, all that changed was damage. And I was like, they get it. They know what we want. And then I saw the item and I was like, they don't get it. Because it was just a damage increase, right? It was like the, the gloves, like the basically face breakers. And I was like, oh, that's not it at all. And then they showed the druid amulet. And I was like, this do more of this. This is what I want. This is exactly this amazing. Yeah. Like, give me like additional projectiles. Give me ricochet. Give me some sort of weird effect. That's my favorite thing. That's all I want more of. Um, but, but I like, think they've done actually a really good job. Exactly what you described, though. Like, look at these new uniques that drop from Duriel. Like, exactly what Crypt just described of the Xephal's ring. That, you know, it's like basically build enabler with like those explosions from your dots. And you have like, you know, like the, the gold sack crown and... Yeah, there's like a flicker step exactly. When I'm using that on the, on the Rain of Arrows, man, it's so much fun. And it really transforms your build. I think most of these are mostly damage increases, though. There's not that many that, like, change the behavior. They're, like, a different way to add damage. Like, even Axe Falls is just a different way to add damage to your build. Right? I, I, I prefer most, more, like, core behaviors. The most interesting items for me are the ones with, like, pretty brutal downsides. I don't like downside as opportunity cost because that just makes the item feel garbage. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, this Temerity effect is good, but the, they have bad stats, so I'm not like going to use it. Sork uniques? Yeah. I, wanna, yeah. I want an item that has a ridiculous stat, and then a stat that completely screws you over. Right. And then your goal is to overcome the challenge to unlock the power. Like, I must have loved that's Scourge. I... <laughs> I think you're no going to see more like what Crypt describes in the future as well. It's I hope probably... so. I mean, it's going in the right direction, but... Yeah, you know, they are trying to add ways to like make gearing more interesting. You know, like you scale your character with different stats now and whatnot. And I think you're gonna go I like that five stats. Well. I I would definitely like five stats. I feel like the seven twenty five. This is like I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's like an eight twenty ish breakpoint for like health scaling because like I've upgraded pieces of gear and like there are certain things. There's only the only thing that I think scales completely all the way up to nine twenty five is armor, like the actual armor on the piece of gear, because even the health value scaling does stop somewhere around the mid 850s, somewhere around there. Yeah. So I feel like you get your gear and you are getting higher item level versions. And I really like how it goes up to 925, mm -hmm. but I would love if there was a way to get gear with like maybe five stats on it or gear yeah. with something else on it whenever you unlock it at like level 900 or something. Because I do feel like the gear the gear grind is missing that last 10% or that last 20% to it. Yeah. yeah. I think what we really need is something like corruption or so in yes. from PoE. I think that would be perfect because you have like so many kind of like decent, good items lying around in your stash. You have like 10 copies of different pants, 10 copies of different helms, and yeah. they're all good. And I'm just like, you know, okay, I mean, I need that one and the rest I'm just going to keep for whenever I want to stop my resist or something. But, um, you know, if you had something like a chance to gamble on your items, that would be uh, superb, I believe, with, like, yep. the flood of loot that you're getting in D4. The fifth step being corruption only would be very, very cool. And, like, especially on, like, uniques and stuff, like, a, a guy in our guild found two Andarius Visage. Like, him wow. actually, like, corrupting one would oh, be man. pretty sick, right? Yeah. Um, so, I, I think... Poof, yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. So, and... 
because they're not tradable, right? I wish there was more of an economy in D4, but um, I, I really like what they did with resistances. I thought I would hate it because from the way they talked about it at the fireside chat and the way they talked about the all rest on the amulet and they... I didn't, I, I don't know if they said it and it was only in the patch notes, but I did at least didn't catch it in the fireside video uh, that there was going to be a resistance drop between like world tier two, three, four. Um, so I was like, are we just going to rest cap from like base, like from putting uh, diamonds in my gear and the amulet? Yeah. Like, is it going to be that simple? But it actually added quite a lot. And I really like the resist swap. I think that was a good step in the right direction. However, I kind of hate the like Vuln for change in a way it is still better and it enables more builds but i'm not excited for any like damage stat now like they're all the same right it doesn't matter if it's close damage healthy enemies vuln crit they're all the same so i still think it's good like it was better than before so it's moving in the right direction but it's very homogenized the damage on gear it's basically it might as well say damage damage on tuesdays yeah. <laughs> uh, there are some differences. Um, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but um, like one one of the um, Paragon legendary notables for Sork is up to thirty percent of your increase to cold damage is added as multiplier to vuln damage. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's cool. Um, right. So so cold cold damage, sure, but it's up to thirty. So three hundred percent cold. It's not that hard to get if you're cold. But actually, it's kind of hard to get if you're fire. But here's the thing. Um, there are multipliers. Like, if I get cold damage multiplier, it actually multiplies the stat. Oh. So I'm actually using that thing that changes between damage types. Mm -hmm. So when it's fire, it's 30. But then when it's cold, it's like 10. Oh, right? the new legendary. Yes. And that's just because of how much cold damage I have. So actually, th there are these subtle differences, but they definitely need more of them. It, yeah. It's not it's not totally homogenized. It's just I just wanted to point out because okay. I'm sure you're going to get nitpicky people for, talking for, about sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. It's not exactly completely homogenized. Yeah. I just wanted yet. to be a little bit more exciting. Like I I don't want like attacking defense. I I, yeah. I really like the resist changes. So. I mean, I I've enjoyed. I think the resist changes are nice. I feel like having maximum resists i think that they basically just took the system from poe and pretty much just put it in diablo which is like i'm kind of okay with that i don't think that's like a horrible thing but yeah i mean it's i guess decent enough yeah they weren't as bad as i thought they were gonna be yeah i mean i would even say like, you don't even need to credit good. poe with it right you could credit d2 mm -hmm. with it oh that's yeah. oh you know i never really this played on d2 so I'm yeah sure. yeah that's fair um, I, I actually thought it would be like perfect, but actually I, I'm kind of the other way. I, I expected greatness, but was a little disappointed. Oh, okay. So. Like, uh, I, like I have zero fire resist on my Sark, and I have like 40 fire resist over cap right now. It's like oh, just so from passive. Oh, because you get everything from Int. Uh, I, I, I will it's have not... you guys know that the only reason I rolled a Sork this league is I assumed that Blizzard would not balance the, the fact that intellect scales resistances. And it would just be super easy to play Sork or Necromancer. Right. And it seems like I've been right. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, a it's a little bit more than that. Uh, so you kind of reach about 70 just having a fully geared out character. But yeah. then the damage type that you pick always puts you over. So I'm fire. Uh -huh. So I go to the fire boards and the fire boards have incidental fire resistance. Right. So, yeah, but yeah. I guess it's just like a perk of playing a Sorg in that case, right? It's just like, yeah, you play a Sorg and you have easy access to Aurus. And I mean, why not, right? I, I think that's fine. It's just like one one advantage of playing a Sorg. Yeah, that's fair. I didn't have that as a rogue. Still, I, still yeah, team rogue I, I now. enjoyed, <laughs> yeah, I like guess a rogue as well. It's like, okay, you get like yeah, four resist rolls or so on your gear, and then you have to fix on your gems. And yeah, I kind of like that little mini game with the resist. It it makes me like think a lot more about which items I'm gonna use to upgrade, and I mm -hmm. kind of like hold off on upgrades a lot more than before because it's kind of like the typical okay, you replace like four things at once kind of story. Yeah, but it's 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 also like you know you do everything in one go. It's not like okay, you find this one upgrade, now you go back, you roll it, you go to your cultist, you upgrade it, whatever, right? It's just like okay, I did I I collect a few items, I see what I got, and then I just like 
you know, swap it around until it matches. And worst case, you pick up a few more nodes on Paragons yeah. and fix your last race, and that's it. That, and then you can still pop an elixir. The only thing that really tilted me there was ring implicits. Like, someone had found a really good ring, and I'm like, ah, oh, the implicit actually, like, undercaps me to, like, 60 poison or whatever. I'd be, like, very annoyed at that. But still doesn't annoy me as much as boot implicits. I don't know. Like, I feel like... Especially this season with the uh, metamorphosis. Little, the right? metamorph yeah. yeah, like I feel like doing anything but plus three of eight is like super inting. So I would find like really perfect boots, but it was like the, I can't remember what the other implicit is. Not Movement the increase speed. Boot. No, there's another one oh, too. Oh, the other one. Your attacks, attacks reduce reduce. Reduce. Yeah, yeah, I, I was like, like that one. I, I like that, that one. I hate it. But the I'm movement speed movement one speed doesn't one. work. It's great. Oh, really? What? <laughs> yeah, the, the movement speed one I thought you were talking about. Because you don't evade when you use metamorph, it's not it's not oh. exactly evade, so you get no movement speed bonus from it. Ooh. So like with with this season with everyone using metamorph, obviously, I mean they they, yeah. I doubt they're surprised. Like wait, everyone likes to Im massively improve and deal massive damage with their evade. Of course they did, right? So oh, that's interesting because I'm not running that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not running it, actually. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I, okay, I used it for the flicker step build, but outside of flicker step, I have like no use for e evading that much. So I just I just run at capped movement speed anyway. Who cares? But it's so. permanent unstoppable. Uh, yeah, unstoppable. Yeah, who cares, man? Nothing sees you. This is 2023, man. Oh, it's also really good with it. like is it temerity or whatever the pants are called? The like 40 multi pants. Uh, it sounds well, like there's... it sounds like they fix so many problems with Digio, You just have to create some of your own to play the game yeah. you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. Man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I don't know. Like I mean, the nerf CC is so much. Uh, there's like not that much going on, honestly. That's anymore. fair. I feel like they they nerfed like the monster, like the snakes are nerfed, and you know, like all of the elite affixes are nerfed. Like unstoppable is extremely optional these days, even on hardcore. I would say. Well, it's still that modifier that's that two bolts will or whatever yeah. the fuck from Durial. Yeah. I got a forty percent roll on that. Yeah, oh same. my god, so that thing is very good. Very good. Yeah. It, did you actually notice something of that? I feel like this thing might give too much damage or something. Like I, I, I'm not sure what's going on with this. In forty tried, like, more is a lot. Up. No, no, it's just like it, it feels more like like times five or something. Like they added a zero too much or so. Uh, well, I think I'm it's a sure. multiplicative. Yeah, but even so, it's like I tried like literally the same boss fight with and without yeah. the pants, and I was like me noticing like you know I was two shotting the boss from like and the other Pro the other problems. time it was like. It was like 10 shots or something, so I don't know what's going on with that. I think that's pretty accurate, though, no? Like, it's the same in, no, like, not... PoE. If you get a 40% multiplier on an already good build, you're going to, like, one-shot. Do we even math? <laughs> I mean, it's because well, it's a 40 it, multiplier no, it, in the other multipliers. Like, it's pretty strong. Well, no, this is what happens, right? Is that you're using a 40% multiplier on top of a 20% damage, on top of a 10% damage, on top of a 50% damage, on top of a plus three skill levels. And so, like, the WoW had this problem in Legion where, like, whenever you had all your cooldowns up, you were doing absolute god mode damage. And then outside of it, you weren't doing any damage. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that's how the numbers can get crazy. Like, I don't know if that's what's happening in this situation. Like, I never did the testing like what Didro did. But, like, for me, I feel like, yeah, the pants are really good. Yeah, and in addition to that, after seeing the Rax video, the, the Blizzard math is a little questionable. So you might be right. It's Maybe it is fucked. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the thing is, like, I went I went to test this, actually, on a bear. Like, you know, I just went to Art of Kyoba Shard, and I, I started slumping mm -hmm. a bear. And the numbers seemed fine. But then I tested it in a dungeon again. I don't know, maybe there's some, some weird double dipping, <laughs> I feel like, with those pens. I there couldn't could figure it out. Because when I did the testing, like, you know, like, you know, on its own, everything was fine. So I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe everything is fine, and I'm tripping. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. They added... Um... A stash space as well. I don't know about you guys, but that was... Oh, I was going to say earlier, that was the number one thing putting me off making a new alt. Because, like, I've pretty much just kept, like, good uniques I care about, aspects, and a few good items. My stash is full already from one character. So I'm like, oh, I don't really want to start over and, like, have to delete a lot of stuff. I think that they should probably make part. the stashes. Yeah, they, they should have, like, a... It would be nice if you had something like two stashes and there was like a one tab stash that was a universal stash and then all the other stashes were character specific. That would be an ideal situation in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's you like could... how the Diablo 2 works, right? Diablo mm -hmm. 2 has like exactly that, like personal and 
and uh, shared stashes or so. I mean, that mm -hmm. would be a good system as well. But uh, I think yeah. more importantly, they just need to like find a solution to the legendary aspects hoarding, right? I think that's like the biggest like uh, space. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the biggest thing that, that picks up all of his space in his stash. How do you guys feel about the suggestion that a lot of people have brought up that the legendary aspects that you find should upgrade the baseline of your codex? Like you apply them to your codex. That's what Rack said, right? That's a permanent thing? I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a permanent thing. Well, I mean, for that season. Right. Yeah, I, I discussed exactly that idea as well with other people. And I think that's not a bad idea. Like, you know, just like allow everything to go directly to the occultist and you know, you, you just like go from there then because be, like eventually you're going to have like five copies of every single thing you want anyway, but you need to store it somewhere and it just like clutters everything, right? And then you like, you want to try out this one new thing and you have like an idea with like your build, you want to swap it and then, oh man, I didn't save that one power. Now I have to go grind five hours until right. it drops. That also feels terrible. So, you know, like you remember, oh man, I salvaged this 20 times. Like it yeah. just feels bad. So, so yeah, I yeah. kind of like it. Um, I think it's good as a casual feature. As a non-casual, it sounds a little bit too easy to me. So, like, maybe a middle solution would be that it increases the average. So, let's say you have, like, you put in a 20%, or sorry, the baseline for Age Master is, what, like, 20? And then you find a perfect one at 40? It increases the average, right? So, now your Age Master is 30. Like plus five. You put in another it's 40, awesome. now it's 35. So, maybe you can't get perfect ones, or you have to grind out a bit to get perfect ones. Um... That way, like, drops are still interesting, because I think that's quite cool that you do need to find a good role, and you get excited for a good role, and I think it's important for ARPGs to have exciting moments. So just finding yeah. one perfect one at the start of the season, now you don't need another, or don't need to care about one for the rest of the season, that sounds a little bit bad to me, but very casual friendly, which is what D4 goes for, so I'm not, like, super opposed to it. But I, I do like, I hate the idea of instantly removing it. Yeah, it okay, would be it's, nice, it's, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Asman. Okay. Um, no, I was just going to say that, you know, it doesn't have to be like you find one perfect one and that's it for the rest of the season. It could be like an incremental increase or something, mm -hmm. right, as well. Yeah. So it's just like you have to, maybe you have to find like 50 times to get actually the perfect from the codex, right? Maybe it starts mm -hmm. easy, like, okay, you get one, you upgrade it plus 1%, you get two, you upgrade it another 1%. And you get five, you upgrade another one percent or something yeah, from the exactly. codex. Disenchanting it gives you experience uh, towards leveling it up or some form of that, effectively. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I yeah, mean, they, they really like experience bars in this game, right? There's the glyphs, there's the vampire powers, there's and, the yeah. and also with stash tabs, we should just be able to like that should be a gold sink, right? They should just keep going. Like it should be five hundred thousand, then a million, then eventually like. Maybe you want a lot. It's eventually like ten million. million. Yeah, like we should just be able to continuously upgrade our stash tabs. Uh, that's it's crazy that we can't absolutely crazy 2023 the technology exists in every other yeah. rpg it's crazy i have seven yeah. mules for only one class right now oh, <laughs> oh my, my god. god that's kind of where i wanted to jump in in, in this discussion it's like you, we're talking about small change small changes to their stash inventory system they need like uh, big changes in their stash and inventory system like i i mostly agree with ziz what he said in regards to the fact that it kind of feels good but the, uh, to find something. But I also like the meaningful decision-making. Like, if I find something that's quite rare in a perfect role, mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of, you know, the strategy of hoping to find a certain level of power in an item before I apply it to something. Yeah. Really, the problem with the aspects is just part of the pretty awful inventory management. Like, if, if you had a PoE stash tab style thing where it's like, you just dump unlimited aspects and yeah, they just go there automatically when you salvage a legendary, then what's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think a filter is also like, the, the stash and filter are some of the baseline changes that I'm like, why? Why don't we have a filter? Like even a button to like click hide blue gear. And like when I initially saw that the game had no filter, I actually thought that you needed to salvage white and blue gear because there were some materials that you only got from white and blue gear. Because I couldn't fathom why else we would on endgame characters be forced to see white and blue gear. Like that, yeah. it's crazy to me. Well, I mean, technically, I still give you the, the same materials, just not bad crystals, right? I think you can even get Forgotten Souls, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. It's very rare uh, salvage chance for getting a Forgotten Crystal from 
uh, I think a legendary or something. Uh, I feel like the forgotten crystals are too hard to get. Like they're forcing people to do hell tides too much. I kind of talked about that a little bit earlier, but like I really have to repeat myself. So fucking annoying. I don't know if other people feel the same way, but like for me, I always felt like hell tide was like, okay, now I have to do my chores. Right. I liked hell tide, so I didn't feel like that. I was just doing them every time. Yeah, I also you do my hell tide. I just follow you around on my mount, and you, you just kill the mobs yeah. for me, okay? I think Druid <laughs> was the best to follow around, because I think the Hemomancy procced from the, the Vine Creeper, so Druid could just run around with Hemo just auto-procking or something. <laughs> really? It's pretty you good. don't have to hit them. Yeah. That's kind you, don't of have the all minion? you don't have to hit them. In, in Helltide, you just have to be like on the same like two-screen area. Yeah. yeah. And and it's the drops are shared globally, which is an awesome feature, by the way. I wish they had, we had that in in Legion. Right. In yeah, Legion, I think you great. actually have to hit a mob to get partial experience. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it, it, like the the group play in the game. I feel like it's very um, there's like very serendipitous group play where like you feel good whenever there are other people around you. Whereas, like, I know in WoW, especially back in the day, the group play, there was always, like, friction and, like, annoyance to it. Yeah, group play is very strong. Like, incredibly yeah, it strong. Is. And almost to the point where it feels... Like, I did one durial for my, like, mm -hmm. video about my build, and I felt, like, such a waste. Like, I'm like, I am fucking yeah. three other people out of a chance for Uber here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, if it wasn't like no, like this crazy like loot share with Duriel, I think that would probably be a bit better. I mean, on one hand, it's kind of nice that you know it's like a, some social activity and you can do it together, and then you know feels good that you have multiple chances if everyone does like a rotation or something. But on the other hand, I feel like it's like too forced. You know, it, it, yeah. I totally agree with this there. Like, I, I want to go in, you know, for example, when I make a build, I'm like, okay, I want to do like. This is what I do in PoE. Like I, I do like one round of all the Uber bosses with a build. I do like a summon acrome, you know, all that stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. exactly like this in in D four as well. Like you know, I want to do like one round of T one hundreds. I want to do one round of Lilith, etc. And then of course a Duriel. But every time I make a build, I want to do a Duriel. I will feel so terrible, you know, grinding up for like an entire hour for like one yeah. Duriel or whatever. Or two I, hours, I mean, you know? that that's a problem with <laughs> shared loot, right? Maybe Duriel shouldn't have shared loot. Duriel should just drop loot. Anyone that's there can pick it up. So you're more incentivized <laughs> to do it solo. Maybe maybe that's slightly better drops in a group. Um, I mean, it's, it but could it's just also, be like a lower chance you know, for people yeah. reaching. It could just be like they have like a 25% chance for a drop. Right. So the host host has the 2% chance and everybody else is like 0.5 or something. That makes sense. I just I, I think it's interesting that D4 is such a heavy focus on group play when ARPG is probably the group of gamers with like the least friends. Like it's like predominantly like solo players. Are, are yeah, you sure about I mean, this? I would kind of, kind of Probably. agree with that. I, I am, I am an enjoyer of the like the Duriel getting a group together and like people that are like gonna come together and like kill a boss to get the items. I think it's kind of a nice thing overall. It, it is. I, I can see how like, and this is always like, I think this is gonna be an ongoing issue that Diablo is gonna run into, is because Diablo is made for an audience. Like, is Diablo made for any of us? No. Okay, like so then it. this is this is the problem. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know exactly how you can fix that, how you can make a game that is effectively made for an audience of people that are very casual, because I think that for casual players, the durial sharing is actually quite good mm -hmm. uh, because then they just get more gear, right? And it encourages them to play together and, like, you know, make a group. But what I do think the game definitely needs, especially now with the durial thing, is uh, they need a group finder. How is there not a group finder? True. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with Asmon. I, like, from my personal perspective, I would really yeah. like for solo players to have more viability and, you know, not feel bad trying to do a, zero, a solo duriel, for example, right? It just feels uh -huh. bad doing it solo. Yeah. But I also agree that I guess most people probably wouldn't care too much just trying to, like, you know, they're happy when they have like this one or two duriel attempts in their inventory and then they're going to, you know, spend some time looking for some people and then they group up and they have like, you know, 10 runs. Yeah, but you can't really do that outside of like Discord communities and whatnot, right? So everyone is complaining about this. And it I wouldn't be really game. be surprised to see like a group finder for for this stuff very soon, actually. Like, like even like something like the WoW. Finder? What? Doesn't Diablo 2 have a group finder? 
I don't know about Diablo 2. Diablo 3 has like public games, but it, this oh, is like a really trash feature. Ooh, okay. Uh, Never mind it. <laughs> you just get groups of like random people of like, you mm -hmm. know, random power levels basically. And it's like full of leechers and bots and whatnot, yeah. as far as I'm aware. But um, for example, the WoW system, right, with the group finder, they can just like have a board and like, you know, you make your, your listing and you invite people and you apply. I mean, that would. Or yeah, it's, a, it's, it's such a pain right now. Like, even if I want to like ask my chat, like, "Hey, does anyone else have a durial? I have one durial. Let me do rotations." I have to add them to Battle.net to like invite them. Like, that's annoying. It would be nice if they could just message me. Yeah, yeah, that is that is also not a problem for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna have to step in here and it's like, do we really want them to keep making bosses that you just easily beat in a group finder? I mean, I I, I don't care so much about the group finder feature. If, like it just feels like a chore almost if that's going to be the thing. Um, well, I don't know. I, I think I think they really just have to implement SSF because they can't yeah. backtrack the group benefits that they've already put on the game. People that play with their friends, they're going to be really pissed off if they're like, "Oh, by the way, everyone needs Durial Master Durial." People are like, "What? What the hell?" So the only way to actually make that work is yeah, you do SSF mode. And I think they should just leave the the group benefits. As they are, let people play in a group if they want. I'm fine with that. Totally Some people right. really like that experience. Sure, but at least um, like letting people this, invite actually. easier would be nice. I mean, you could you could like remove group benefits or like lower them at least, and it can buff the base drop rates, for example. So I don't think this is a really good argument. You can just you know make the drop rate for Uber unique like five percent instead of two percent, but well, uh, you know it's like more solo viable. I think it's like so, two different arguments, right? Because like I, I feel like everybody here is in agreement that having a solo self-found option would be good. Yeah. Right. Like this, this would just be yeah. a good thing. Like not that like you would have to play with it, but just if it was available, I think it would be good. It, I think yeah. also like if you if you nerfed it and you made it to where people weren't able to get as much gear effectively from playing with their friends, then yeah, that would kind of suck. If they buff the base chance, like if you only got a lower chance whenever you it wasn't your summon and whenever it was your summon you got a higher chance i would kind of be okay with that but i feel like that also could be too much over design and i'm just not sure really like how much of a problem is this for the average diablo gamer the guy that plays diablo 4 on a sofa on his on his console is this an issue for him and i don't know yet I, I think almost nothing is though. Like the most yeah. casual gamer, they don't like they don't engage with Reddit. They don't watch videos. They just like they log in, they boot up their PlayStation one day, and they're like, "Oh, there's an update. Oh, there's a new thing out," and they, they play. Right? They don't like integrate yeah. that much with the or the other stuff. So like none of these are issues for those. And the game is already a great game for those people. So I see. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people. It's crazy to see how many people, like, you know, the Elon Musk was streaming Diablo, the Nightmare Dungeon, right? That was pretty crazy to see. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that there is, like, that kind of is like the, and I hate this term, but I feel like with Diablo, it's kind of true. It's like the silent majority, you know, mm -hmm. of those yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, a lot yeah, of the things we're complaining about is, like, very, like, for like no lifers and stuff but also mm -hmm. like the most most of the people that watches aren't casual players like obviously there are casual players in the chat but most people probably also play people like that aren't yeah yeah like a lot of no lifers i think that's always going to be the challenge right how to make no lifers and people that want to play the game that want to have a season last a month and like play it every day and last that mm -hmm. have that last for like a month maybe two or three weeks at least how to make those people happy while at the same time making the casual players that you know play with yeah. their wife on the weekend mm -hmm. happy absolutely that, that's the real challenge do you know i wonder if we'll ever get a map overlay <laughs> that's the thing i want you guys to feel like you need a map yes overlay? absolutely yeah, i'm happy with it as it is so. oh my god i'm oh. okay with it the way it is i hate it like I, if they had a map overlay <laughs> well like so much. i i see why they don't want to have one right i do understand it but at the same time, like, I think that, yeah, if it becomes annoying or whatever, like, if the dungeons are optimized in a good way, like, a best-case scenario in my mind is very well-optimized dungeons that you don't need a map overlay to traverse. But why not give me the option? Like, you don't have to use it. Um, I think that if you give people the option, everybody is going to play with the map overlay on all the time. Because whenever I watch a lot of PoE streams, that's kind of what they're like. And I think that you're right. If, like... If the game is still kind of shitty and it doesn't feel good to play, 
then it doesn't really matter because at least playing with the map overlay on means that you're enjoying the game and like you're actually doing something rather than just being annoyed. I feel like I'm so, getting like, punished for other people having poor self control. I don't um, think it has to do anything with self control. I just, completely agree with Asmongol. They just yeah. want to trigger you, Ziz. That's just what they do. They have a guy whose job at Blizzard is to trigger you. <laughs> Is that He's right? doing a good job, too. He'd probably get a raise. <laughs> well, like, I mean, what, what you're saying is, right, I, everything you're saying makes sense, right? You're, uh, everything you're saying, like, yeah, you're, you're kind of right. Like, why should you be punished? But it's like, at what point does the developer stop the player from diminishing their own experience? And I, I can at least respect Blizzard's attempt to try to do that, even though, yes, maybe it could be annoying. I mean, yeah, I, I, the... I agree with this. Like, the thing is, they want to, to focus more on the actual combat, the actual like layout, the dungeon, yeah. and the monsters. And uh, they do a pretty good job at that. You know, there are dangerous monsters, there are dangerous elites, etc. It's not just you look at your dot running around on the overlay and you watch everything explode in the background, like in PoE, right? Like, there are there are definitely like you know these tactical approaches to certain fights and these kind of things. That is, it's just very different from PoE combat, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think having the map overlay would kind of like take away from that and would like much more push us towards this like blaster mentality, basically. Yeah. And even being a blaster myself, I actually like the way it is right now, personally, because it's just like much better focused on the combat. But I well, still look at the who's combat. It? But like the, the problem for me, the flip side, is now I'm spamming my map when going anywhere because like the autopilot thing, most of the time doesn't work or a lot of the time doesn't work what <laughs> like the oh, no. there's like so many zones where like and inside dungeons as well it doesn't work the autopilot thing like the waypoint no waypoint like where you click on it and uh -huh. then you follow the line yeah that doesn't oh, work inside yeah. dungeons and it doesn't work um in a lot of like zones in a lot of the health they zones should make that work inside dungeons that's yeah. a good idea the GPS yeah they thing. should do that i don't know why they. i'm don't. spamming m and i'm opening and closing my map because I like seeing where I am all the time. So here's, here's a strat, you know, they're going to enable it for dungeons. And then it's just like, you know, you try to memorize the dungeon layouts and just right click on where the boss is. And then it will yeah. tell you exactly the shortest path in the boss. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if somebody wants to metagame that hard, I feel like let them. You know, like if they really care that much about it, just let them fucking do it. It's not that big of a deal in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I just, I just don't think it's that, that big of a deal. I think they're starting to tackle problems pretty well, I would say. Yeah. And that's just not that high up on their list. And yes, I'm I don't minority on this one. disagree that much with that, honestly. Yeah. Well, do you guys, do you guys think the game, like, obviously Duriel got added, Grigor got added, the Beast and Ice, uh, Lord uh, Zir got added do you all think the game is too easy i wanted too easy? to bring that up earlier i wish there was an easy and hard version of those bosses like the current bosses like the non-durial non-lilith bosses they all feel like world tier 3 bosses because even even durial could do with being a little bit harder i actually think all of these fights that you mentioned i think all the fights in the game are actually excellent fights they're really cool i really like each and every one of them but the the numbers both on damage and defense on the bosses seem really off i think it's really hard to balance diablo 4 because there's such a big disparity between builds like look at just the difference between some of the top builds right if you look at the difference between yeah. um my build a sork build and the barb build these are all insane builds but like i'm hitting for like 30 million damage, the Barbarian hitting for 500 or whatever. Right. So it's like, it's kind of hard to balance, but we did, on Hardcore, we did Duriel at level 70, and Ooh. that was a pretty cool fight. Like, it was pretty yeah. hard. We we uh, actually, the other people in my party procked and had to leave. I stayed in and then realized they had left, and I was like, oh, I guess I'll leave too. Um, but um, yeah, it was a really, really cool fight at 70. And uh, the other fights, you though... don't have enough health. Yeah. The other fights were incredibly easy at 70. Um, and I, I wish there were a harder version, because they're, they're really cool fights. Like, Varshan, I actually really enjoy fighting with, like, the dodging the stuff on the ground. So... I think, I think they could do, like, the similar thing, like, in PoE, where you have, like, you know, the option to switch on an Uber mode of all of these fights, and they're all, like, you know, level 150, and, you know, they're actually, like, crazy, and... 
maybe give them like slightly better rewards, but not to the point where you feel like it's mandatory to try to beat them on the hard mode. Mm -hmm. And I think PoE does that really well, right? It, it yeah, can still it's just a higher chance. Bosses. Exactly. You have like a bit better loot or something, and okay, yeah. like you don't get the elevated sextant from or something um, from Maven or whatever. But you know, these kind of things, it's not like such a big deal, and it would be really cool to have because I agree that bosses are pretty well designed, but you don't really see any of them if you play a good build, right? You just go in and you blast them down, and okay, blast one shot them, everyone else gets them in five seconds or 10 seconds. I mean, not a big difference, really. No. And I think they have done such a big rebalance this patch that I think they were just like, trying to go more on the easier side you know just like making sure that no one feels like you know crushed by right. the new balance or something so much yeah. and i would also wouldn't be surprised for, for them to like you know go back on some of these on like a player power next time you know they're going to make the i think new season, season three yeah. yeah i think so. season three is going to be much more of a challenge league than this one is i think this one is like setting the groundwork for them to make the yeah. first challenge league with leaderboards that's what i think is going to happen hope so That'd be nice. I do want to quickly butt in on the PoE comment. Like the PoE way could be a lot better too, because it's quite punishing. A lot of people feel like if you're not doing an Uber, you're wasting it, because you do have the Uber drops in PoE. I think the best way, in my opinion, of differentiating, which PoE, in my opinion, should do as well, is that the Uber version and normal version should both have really, really separate drops, so that it's like they they should both have valuable and really good drops, right? So that. If you're doing the Uber version, well, you're not getting the normal version stuff, and maybe you need something from the normal version. So I'm I'm a big get fan of like separate loot tables there. Then you have like a, a clear reason to do the different ones. And so that way you don't feel like you're wasting it. Yeah, I can see what yeah, you're saying. I think that's especially a good point. in software, like in hardcore and PoE, it's not a problem, right? Because well, I can't do the Uber versions, I'll die, and it's still quite right. valuable to farm the normal ones. Whereas on software, I know so many software people on PoE feels like they're wasting an imitation by not doing the Uber. Mm -hmm. yeah, kind of what I felt before with, uh, we get yeah, too, I would sell all my invitations before we get too off track I kind of just want to mention I think we actually talked about this in the previous one but I think the the issues they experience in Diablo is because yeah the numbers aren't finely tuned yeah but also more importantly um they don't have a constraint on on defense um which is interesting um like you can get two rolls on one piece two rolls that will double the EHP of your character Okay, like an item like that in PoE doesn't exist. Um, maybe Aegis Aurora if you're already built into it. Maybe, right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. So they're double downing on um, putting a constraint on damage, which again, I can't tell them is wrong. It's interesting, right? It's interesting. I can't tell them it's wrong. But then those numbers aren't finely tuned either. Yeah, we have barbs that are literally killing the healthiest boss in one hit in a four-player group. So they're kind of letting balance seep through the cracks on both ends, which is which is really a problem. Um, and I don't know, maybe that leads into itemization a little bit, in the discussion, because that is pretty questionable. Like again, in PoE, there is there is almost no item that half of it would essentially give you the survivability the survivability mm -hmm. benefits that an item in D4 gives you. Like, you, you can get a chest with four survivability stats. Hell, you can get an amulet with four survivability stats in, yeah. in Diablo 4. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree I, with that. It's, it's also like very strange. But uh, I think that's also why so many people have so many uh, issues actually surviving in higher tier content as well in Diablo 4, because they kind of, like, neglect these defensive stats. And then they come to my stream, they're asking, like, hey, what can I do? I'm dying all the time. And then you like explain, okay, I first of all, I resist capped. And if, if yes, like, do I have any defense? And if the, if the answer is no, they have no armor or something like that, you know, just <laughs> get blasted, right? And if you have like these two or three rolls, suddenly you're like a tank. So I think like there's, there's like a too much of a, of a jump basically from like these, these kind of like details almost that, that you have on like a few item pieces. It's pretty extreme in the other four. And I actually not sure if I really like that too much. So you think that there should be, like, theoretically, right, there could be two offensive and two defensive stats on each piece of gear? Uh, like, it this, doesn't have to be like that. It... The, yeah, I'm just, I'm not really sure exactly how to make it, make that work. Because, the... yeah, you're kind of right. I mean, you can probably build a little bit too much into defense. Yeah, it's maybe just like that the defensive affixes are just way mm -hmm. too strong compared to the offensive affixes that you can get in the same slot. Like, if you I look at the chest, you yeah. can't roll damage on it, but the damage is completely irrelevant. You know, you can get like 2% damage, or you can have 
you know, plus 25% EHP, right? <laughs> so it's not it's not the same, you know, not anywhere close in the same galaxy even. You know, you always go quadru quadruple uh, dam damage reduction on your chest. You know, there's no question about it. You would never roll an, like, actively an offensive stat on your chest. And they're additive stats, so they're not even the good multipliers. Yeah, exactly. They're just trash. You know, they're just, you know there's never any chance that you would want this, basically, unless you really want to just do, like, you know, some open world speed farming setup but then you have enough damage anyway so who cares so if you want to do any kind of like challenging content uh you want the defense so there's also the problem with legendary powers like most legendary powers are like 30 percent more damage generic kind of but then the survivability ones are also like 30 percent. like how does how does that work when on the items it's so lopsided yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is the same, the same yeah, story there. Right? You can just kind of like replace one or two legendary defensive powers with one or two rolls on a gear, right? Yeah. And it's just like, okay, now you can put you know utility ones on your helm and your chest or something. And yeah, yeah. it's very strange. Yeah, it's pretty hard to to balance. It, it is sad because like I don't know if you've tried fighting the bosses like super under level, but when you're at a level that you're not like killing them and not like when 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 their moves are dangerous, they're really fun. Like, all of them are really fun. And, well, like, okay, so I think they kind of mangled Uber Lilith this season. Like, it was very, very disappointing to, like, one-shot her. Um, and I really liked her in Season 0. I'm kind of, like, beating myself up a little bit for not killing her while she's that dangerous. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I inherently actually love the Blizzard way of doing a boss and having it initially, like with Cthun, et cetera, where it's like almost unbeatable. It's either unbeatable literally, and people are just getting close and maybe it needs to be nerfed and then people can kill it. And then they're eventually making it easier and easier. I think the only reason I hate that with Lilith right now is because there is nothing else hard, right? That like, there's like a power vacuum now. There's nothing to grind your teeth on. It's a very hard fight. Um, but I actually I think love it'd that. Be nice if they, yeah, if they had like a little bit more challenging fights for sure. I didn't really like. I felt like the hitboxes and like some of the colors. Like I didn't like how, for example, you had yes. to avoid like the red fireballs whenever the ground was falling apart. That was also the same color as the fireballs in phase two. I thought that was just like really shitty. Yeah. But overall, like if the mechanics played the way that they should play, I think the fight would be fine. Yeah. And yeah, I think what they should have done with Lilith is instead of nerfing her HP to like 10% of the previous value, they should have just like nerfed the damage of her abilities by half or something. So you mm -hmm. can maybe tank a wave if you pop your cooldown, and you can tank yeah. a skull or two, and you can actually play the fight and not just, okay, like, you know, right now, everyone that kills Lilith is just going in and ignores every single mechanic because he just one shot her or yep. nearly one shot her, right? Yeah, there, if, if that doesn't happen, then, fly. yeah, exactly. If that doesn't happen, then your build sucks. And you die and you go again with a better build, right? Until you can just ignore the fight. And uh, like why why do you why do you, why do you rob everyone of the experience of actually playing the fight, you know, by just like you could just nerf the damage a bit, you know, like you know, give mm -hmm. give people a bit of a chance to to fight her and do a mistake or or two and still keep going instead of just you know, just removing everything basically. Insta gib and that's it, like it's start over again. Yeah. Like, I remember I would have to, like, record the attempts and, like, I would go back to the VOD and look, oh, I got hit by this because I, I couldn't even really see it sometimes in phase two. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously I only put, like, probably probably less than 100 attempts into the boss. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I really put in major time to it, but it Part wasn't, it. like, a fun 100 attempts. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wish that it was, like, a little bit more tightly tuned. And in terms of, like, you know, you compare Uber Lilith to... Uh, Vicus or uh, Vaulton or one of the bosses in mm -hmm. Lost Ark and the Lost Ark bosses are just so much tighter, so much cleaner. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's more like they need to they need to add more like kind of like attrition to these boss fights, maybe like you yeah. know, like you can make mistakes, but you can't make too many. Right? Yeah. So this would probably be it's, in the it's way. It's very binary. This, yeah. Yeah. Like that now it's just like you get one shot or you one shot her and that's it. So now I did really like it in Season 0, so the the main reason I didn't kill in Season 0, I had her on like 30 to 50% in Phase 2, but then I went into the fight and I was like, okay, I got my cheat death in my in my inventory, ready? Okay, cool. I didn't pop it. So I actually tried a uh, tried a legit attempt of uh, Lilith and yeah, she one-shot me. Um, but, but it's kind of interesting because... I kind of, I don't know, I really want to get your guys' takes on this, as I kind of hate and love 
uh, or rather, I hate that there's both Cheat Death and Scroll of Escape on Hardcore. Like, Diablo 4 right now doesn't have Hardcore. Um, and I kind of wish Cheat Death was only for things like Lilith. Because I think there it really makes sense. And it allows to make, like, really crazy hard fights. Um, where it's basically almost like a rhythm game. If the hitboxes were accurate. It almost makes, like, yeah. a rhythm game. And I love that. But the fact that you... At least this season, I could probably have permanently run a cheat death potion this season. Like, I get so many materials for it. I have, like, 45. Because um, I, I know to use them. Whereas Scroll of Escape, we have very little of. I have found seven the entire season. And I'd rather cheat death just oh. only work on Lilith. And then Scroll of Escape be, like, a, a normal thing. I'm, you know, like what you were saying at the beginning, right? Is, like, you're kind of a hardcore player, so you don't really know about softcore stuff. Like... I'm kind of the same way with hardcore. Like, in, like, just, like, my gut feeling, it does seem kind of cheesy that you're playing hardcore and you have, like, multiple get-out-of-jail-free cards. Like, this seems a little bit weird. However, um, you know, I don't really play it a lot, so I'm not really sure what they should do in mm -hmm. terms of hardcore. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, I, 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 can, I played only hardcore, basically, in this game. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, I really like the lower scroll, scroll drop rate. And I think the scroll itself is like an excellent tool, especially with the low drop rate now. Like I found like, I don't know, total 15 or something at this point. Yeah. You know, it's not like they're dropping and they're raining from the sky. You know, I've been blasting like 12 hours every single day. So, you know, they, they drop here and there, but you can't just really spam them. So and I really like this. I think the drop rate is pretty, pretty much in a good spot right now. So it gives you like this option to like, you know, really get out of a fight or, you know, like something goes wrong or whatever. But yeah, I totally agree with the Elixir. I think the Elixir, this is something I've been saying since, you know, mm -hmm. pre-release, since pre-beta, you know, like years ago at this point, you know, like, please no cheat deaths. And for some reason, they just they just made it easier and easier to get these Elixirs now. You can, can literally run yeah. permanent like, from the start. And it's just like, why? You know, the game is already very easy. And, you know, the game doesn't have anything that is, like, you know, surprising, let's say, or, like, unfair or something like that for a hardcore player. What? Disconnects. You can disconnect. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. disconnects. Yeah, for this, you yeah. have to scroll now. So, you know, yeah. but I mean, like, from, like, a gameplay perspective, you know, it's not like, you know, you see these typical PoE rip clips, you know, people die to, like, cause explosion from a boss or something, and, you know, they die to, like, some ground effect from, like, like that enemy or whatever, right? There's, like, tons of these things. And this doesn't exist at all in Diablo 4. Like, mm -hmm. if you die in Diablo 4, then this is entirely your own fault. And yeah. you don't need the Elixir That's to give fair. you a cheat death. And you have to scroll on top of this. So even if something goes wrong and you, you understand that you're, like, in a, in a tough spot, you can still use a scroll, but you can't do that often. So I think with the low scroll drop rate and with how the game is balanced right now to be relatively easy, it would make perfect sense to just, like, not have the elixir at all or at the very least yeah. have it like 100 times more rare you know if i can pop like one elixir per 50 hours or whatever i think that would be okay mm -hmm. you know that would that would be fine you know i want to try a t100 dungeon okay let's pop an elixir you know just in case but uh, you know it's like it needs to be even more rare than a scroll in my opinion and yeah that would be okay. either either make okay. it really rare or only work for ubers the this yeah for the uber the bosses that would be potion fine. doesn't doesn't actually save you from uh dying on Lilith I believe right like if you fall off the platform you die even with True. the cheat death elixir yep. <laughs> right yeah yeah exactly so that's kind of that's kind of bizarre also I like that I think that's fun <laughs> um whoever's gonna die with a cheat death elixir is not gonna like that right that's <laughs> fair but I don't know I feel like cheat death doesn't really make sense for d4 because the difficulty is like pretty low on the active gameplay like it's pretty hard sorry Tom Tom one of my chatters died two times this thing but I think it's quite mm. difficult to <laughs> like die while playing like the main thing people were dying to we were seeing in season zero was um uh disconnects which yeah to desync or yeah, something yeah scroll stupid, of escape yeah. should have fixed that I think somebody died while desync um personally I actually think scroll of escape should be a little bit more common specifically because I don't. DCs? Yeah, it's your DC protection. I think it's important that you re like you reasonably have one all the time, uh, and you're not really using it that much. I feel. I think I only used it once in combat, and four times on misclicks. Uh, so I, I think it could be like slightly more yeah. common, and I think it is a, a really really good way. But yeah, yes. Yeah, I did play a hardcore a bit last last season mm -hmm. and uh, the the, the preseason. And uh, I quite like the the drop rate in in general. Um, 
it's just yeah as we just said the, the the more you play the the like you can't craft cheat death elixirs all the time until you're like 50 or 60 but then you can and then you just have like way too much like there's no way you'd ever run out yeah at that point like it's so yeah. abundant yeah you get exactly. so many uh, like, for example how it was how it was in season zero like on launch you know these are these materials were like extremely rare they just didn't drop you know these monster parts that you needed for the elixir and you had to like you, you could actually go and farm these like rare monsters and you could like you know stack up some of those elixirs yeah but you had to like actively go and do that and now it's just like they have to drop it by like times 20 or something and you just have hundreds like, i can actually log in and craft 100 elixirs right now you know i can be i can just let it run for the entire next week if i want without yeah. playing <laughs> so. yeah it could it could be like maybe a drop only thing too and a rare drop like right now honestly probably the thing i get most excited for was the uber unique and then after that scroll of escape every time i see a scroll <laughs> yeah. of escape i'm like oh another one yeah it feels good man yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally with like elixir could be like that maybe like half the drop rate or something or a fourth even um yeah exactly like, exactly. like if you find one elixir and you can't craft it and it's like a one in one in 20 hours drop or something you know why not right yeah so i, I will be on board with that yeah and and like it's very interesting because hardcore is technically easier than softcore in some ways. How's Beca that? Because you uh, have the cheat death elixir on boss fights. Yeah, if you're doing yeah, because it set. doesn't exist on softcore. So if you're doing Lilith, you get one shot, right? Even if you're pretty confident that you can finish the fight, that fight is over for you on hardcore. Like on my Lilith kill this season, like the ghost actually killed me in the last like 0. 0.2 seconds of the fight. So I actually would have lost the fight on softcore, but since I was hardcore. Oh. Even yeah, though she I got pulled that shit on ghost. me too. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, 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 I thought have... the fight was over. So I was like, yay! And then the ghost came out and slapped me. And I was like, oh, oh no. Yeah. yeah. I also did some random Lilith test. And I also, like, I accidentally dashed out of the arena in phase one and proc my death. Uh -huh. But then I killed her. And then I went to phase two. And I also basically insta one shot her. And uh, I just kept going, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah. Yeah. kind of funny. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Definitely would like. My chat is calling you a, a logout macro enjoyer. Your opinion is irrelevant. Well, hey. I think it, like... it, it's a legitimate gameplay mechanic. Yeah, you know? I actually, well, yeah. I like it a lot more, right? Like if we compare Season Zero Diablo Four versus Path of Exile, in in Season Zero Diablo Four, the only time you did was things outside of your control is when you would die. Whereas in Path of Exile, you pretty much never have an unfair death, right? It's pretty much just corpse explosion left. Other than that, you made a mistake and you died in Path of Exile. I yeah. think that's great. There's more I than that. There's... Like, I, I feel like, especially with new mechanics, people are just not even doing it in, in hardcore in PoE. They, uh, they wait for other people to figure it out and die to it. And then they sure. take those lessons. And I mean, that's kind of weird. Let's be honest. That's kind of weird. Like, yeah, go back to Asmogold's uh, couch potato gamer example. How does that guy play hardcore? And I mean, he doesn't. But hardcore is supposed well, to be I, a challenge. You are supposed to. For, for dads, yeah. Yeah, you are <laughs> supposed to like approach things carefully. That's the entire premise, right? Yeah. I think Having someone else die to it before you do is not careful. Why it's... not? How do you think we tested what food groups to eat? I'd be like, hey, Woody, eat this berry. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, I'm not eating that. All right? It's literally the premise. <laughs> yeah, I think that generally, you know, there, there can never be anything wrong with making hardcore actually difficult. You know, this is like a mode that's like opt in. It doesn't give you any advantage. This is like made for people that want to have a challenge, right? Yeah. And, you know, they, they, they can't, you cannot make a mistake by making it difficult. So, you know, yeah. everyone who does want difficult content, they can play softcore. You know, it's there. Mm -hmm. So, yep. I agree. Uh, why? I agree. I do think the logout macro is better than having a potion, like as somebody who doesn't play hardcore, because it seems like using your logout macro is a decision. Mm -hmm. And that decision has a cost, right? Of like, you know, you're out of the map or you lose the portal or something like that. You can only do that so many times yeah. on a boss fight. So like it is a decision that is a reaction to something that is happening immediately. Whereas like using the potion is like just saying, hey, if something bad happens, I've got this on. Yeah, and yeah, and, yeah. and Scroll of Escape is exactly the same as Logan Macro, just slightly more powerful because your mm -hmm. system could freeze while closing the client in Path of Exile and yep. you could stay in. The so Scroll of Escape is slightly stronger. So I actually prefer Scroll of Escape and I wish we had something like that in PoE. Um, it does suck because, uh, yeah, again, if your client freezes, you might just die. 
But if if that's activated automatically on a clan crush, then it's just better. And and having it as an item tool maybe makes it something that you're less like likely to use willy nilly. Um, so I, I think scroll of escape is really good. Yeah, actually, I, like I find it. myself like really trying to be resourceful with those scrolls. You know, mm -hmm. I'm really thinking like, hey, do I really want to try that of now? Like and, and like also I have proctor of the elixir up for example, yeah. and then I was like, do I scroll out now? Yeah, <laughs> do I really want to use it? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, you should, it's also you kind of nice because it's so rare now. You know, I have like I have like three of them in my stash now or something. You know, it's just you know I've done a few lilifs. You know, I've used it here in the tier one hundred and whatnot, and you know, I have like three scrolls left or something. And like, okay, like, okay, I need one for my DC uh, if that happens, and you know, I have like one extra and. <laughs> Hundred percent. That, that's why, like, every I, time I, I misclick one, I'm like, no, and I like slap my face. <laughs> and people are like, what happened? Did you die? And I was like, no, I misclicked another scroll of escape. Uh, like, ah, oh, very frustrating. You should change your keybind. But it's not even the keybind. It's because I like it's where I put it on the G scroll wheel, and I didn't bother keybinding escape. Is it though? Is is there any is there any slippage like the logout macro? Uh... It's like a little bit dangerous, and and you're thinking it's like log out macro time, but then no, after no, I would you, use them you press it, you realize it's not PoE. It's no, not no, 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 no. I didn't hit my hockey on accident. <laughs> I put it so like I put it on D is my um, open the scroll wheel, and top left is leave dungeon, and just straight left is my scroll of escape. So I just need to move it, uh, but all of them were just trying to reset the dungeon. That was annoying. This is a bad yeah, place. Maybe, maybe put it on the second wheel, you know, and not on yeah. the first one. Yeah. <laughs> but be careful because I think that resets all the time, right? There's this bug where oh, your, your wheel resets. Yeah. Like the only the first know. one is saved and the others, they reset all the time, at least for me. Oh, like I, it's a good thing I have it on the first wheel then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I noticed that at least a few times I had to like rebind my, my wheel. Shouldn't have told them. That's content. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, halt. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, halt. <laughs> um, oh, actually, one final thing about season two before we move on to like the future of Diablo Four. Uh, I love to talk about like how you feel about the different vampiric powers because personally, I think they did an absolute amazing job. Like Hemomancy is maybe a little bit like dumb not to take for a lot of builds, but at least I don't take it all the time. I don't take it on bosses, etc. And what I really like about it is. It gave me the feeling of difficult choices, which is I love when games do that. When I feel like I want this, this, and this, but oh, but then I don't get that. A great choice. I think thematically they're very good, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily agree with with Hemomancy. Like Hemomancy is good for like leveling, but you're playing a rogue and it's got like physical scaling in it. Like imagine all those but, powers. I mean, they're vampiric powers. Why is it even physical? But, Why is but it I not like shadow? Everything. At like in even like the right, but it's it's physical. Rogues have some physical scaling. Right, not really. Sorks I don't scale have physical. No physical scaling. I don't scale They're physical. all physical bit. Well, <laughs> don't you incidentally? No, I just forced it to be crit and then scale crit. Okay, sure. Yeah. But my point is like, um, I I I think thematically they're pretty cool. Uh, they certainly change up how you how you make a character, which is the most important part. I think they do deliver on that end. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and I think there is some variance. Like I actually think the the most powerful one is um, Ravenous, uh, the one that gives you like eighty attack speed. Oh, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't know how that's not the most broken one. Like I think that's yeah maybe even more broken than Metamorphosis, which I think just about everyone has. <laughs> Yeah, it's very oh, strong. I, I have neither Ravenous nor Metamorphosis, so I'm wow. doing something wrong here, yeah. I think. <laughs> I'm going to play there real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, I never but, uh, did the seasonal quest line, so I don't have the attack speed one. <laughs> it was oh, man. Out on the first day, I just never came back and did you're it. You're playing boomer mode, then. You're, you're, you're yeah. really missing out. Maybe you're I you're, you're using half as many out. actions. <laughs> yeah, okay, wow. Wait, aren't you playing exactly. ball lightning? Isn't that, like, yeah. pretty key? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, okay. I have no idea. Like, I mean, I killed Uber Lewis. She didn't do anything. I mean, how much better can it get? Twice as fast. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, well, I mean, shit. It seems fine to me. Everything was okay. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, I didn't have any complaints. But I, I feel like the um, the blood mechanics, they were they were good. I mean, I, I liked them. I felt like the, like, balancing the mechanics kind of was, it was 
like a annoyance at the beginning or sorry at the end of the game and at the beginning it was basically a barrier to using new gear so i feel like having the different like icons on the gear that you needed in order to activate the blood effects i felt yeah. like that really didn't hit the mark i i feel like it was just annoying at the beginning and then it was inconsequential at the end i think that's probably the best way i could say it actually they yeah. just kind of wanted to have a system that limits you from having like five of the most broken powers. Like, if I could have unlimited points, yeah. I would actually have a different setup. Um, I, but I mean, it could probably solve that by just like making it like okay, like, like there's no different three types of packs, there's just like packs, you know, and just have the same maximum 20 and you have the same, you know, the major cost six and the small ones cost one to three. And it could just be like without this little mini game of like, you know, adding this pack yeah. and that pack and you know like i totally agree with that it's kind of like i wouldn't even say annoying it's just like okay a, a time thing for no reason almost right is you have like a bunch of stuff in your inventory it's could, could just be like well, you know you have that you have that limitation of 20 packs and it doesn't really matter if there's like different types or something and that would make it easier but it, generally i think it's not such a big problem well, and like the a, powers mm -hmm. are pretty well done. it's like an early only thing so a big like thing i like for solving that issue is that just keep it as it is early game and then have it be like an unlockable power that you like kill a uber lord zero or something and then you don't need the uh things anymore then it's just about the you have a, a limited amount of what you can do maybe have that be something that even upgrades so instead of having 20 max you have 22 max and you don't need to like balance mm -hmm. them i mean yeah I, I do agree that that the system is tedious but yeah it also feels uh it just feels like it's not 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 the best way to do it, but I don't know. I, I think the only real issue is the whole clicking and escape thing that we kind of went over it um, mm -hmm. with just getting the powers. Yeah, that was. I, I don't find I don't find the gear too tedious. They could have done it better. I just cut them a lot of slack because of the stark difference between the overall season two package and the season one package that we were dealt. Um, it's a lot better. So yeah, and. There's so many systems, I almost expected more things to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I think it's okay. Yeah, I mean, looking at it from that perspective, I, I agree. Actually, I mean, the season is fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun with the season mechanic. I had a lot of fun trying out different vampire powers. And I think, honestly, like, almost all of them really have some merit. You know, there, there are definitely ways to include almost anything into many different builds and yeah some may look really good but then you figure out okay there's like this other combo and suddenly i don't have enough packs anymore to do all of that and mm -hmm. you know there, there's definitely decision making much more than with million hearts right million hearts was just like okay uh you know barber op mm -hmm. and then maybe you dro drop in like you know the revenge heart for defense and then maybe the auto heart on the necro or the pull heart on the druids and you were done right and this was literally every single build so you know, there were like 30 hearts and like five of them were good and the rest was whatever. And I think that is absolutely not the case. They have a much better balance this time. And that definitely makes it a lot more fun. Yeah. Um, for the next topic, I want to talk about like what you guys expect and hope to see in like the future. Like, what do you think they should like add and, and what direction should they go in that would make you enjoy playing the game for longer, especially as somebody that does play it a lot. So we can start with Woody here because you you play a lot of Diablo 4. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we already know that something is coming in Season 3 and, mm -hmm. well, I guess uh, next week, BlizzCon, we're going to learn more about that. Yeah. Uh, my expectation would just be that this is something like a Rift system, like in Indie 3, with rank randomized content with a scaling difficulty that it goes way beyond what we have right now with leaderboards attached to them. So, yeah, basically a copy of the free, just better, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that is a good start if they do something like that, at least. So we'll see what exactly will be. Um, I mean, for the long distant future, I guess, uh, I would really like to see more different types of, like, t challenging content. You know, we talked about the bosses and, you know, there could be it could be all kinds of things, right? It could be, like, farming-related things or, like, you know, like, speed farming kind of, like, leaderboards or whatever, yeah. right? It could be, like, conquest types where they have, like, a really hard challenge that you have to unlock once in a season. And, you know, maybe I would also like to see more stuff, like, in PoE with, like, Void Stones, for example. Yeah. Uh, or, like, you know, something like the Atlas Passage Tree, even, where... Um, or, like, player agency. You know, 
Yeah, exactly. Where okay, I can actually like modify my nightmare dungeons, you know. And I let, let's say there's like this one node you get like fifty percent more butchers, or there's like this one node you get like fifty percent more blood seekers, or you get like you know more density, you get more, you know, you can maybe choose the drops, you know, maybe you get like plus hundred percent bows and plus hundred percent boots or whatever, right? You can like maybe choose these kind of things and you know like uh, have some options and feel like you're actually making a meaningful impact in uh, progressing your character or just yeah. like farming the stuff you want to. So this is definitely the stuff that I'm looking for 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 the future for now. Yeah, Rip, what about you? Um, again, I kind of want to reiterate. I'm I'm pretty happy with what they did this league, mm -hmm. um, or this season. Sorry, I keep, keep calling and mixing it up with Poe. But yeah, for me, the benchmark has been Poe leagues. I'm comparing it to that, and for me, I kind of got like a week worth of gameplay out of it. Um, I feel like the main things they have to do are uh build upon the game so uh, they don't scrap too much of the vampire system and everything that has to do with that and then just add another system next season um not not what they did with season one to two but i didn't like season one that much so i didn't mind quite as much um i also feel like probably through itemization uh i'd like to see them um give us kind of broad thematic leanings toward character like i want to make this character a lot more defensive or i want to make this character a lot more glass cannon uh those decisions aren't really too meaningful and that's kind of because those options aren't really there with the itemization um you're always kind of similar tankiness and damage you usually are pretty similar or you're using the few things that slip through the cracks but at the same time yeah, I think they rushed out a lot of mechanics this season. I am mm -hmm. expecting the 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 balance to be a bit more tightened next season. Um, yeah. Maybe that is too much to expect, though. We'll see. Because I I think if you take away like the top like five builds in the game, it's like pretty good balance wise. I think so anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, it's even like uh, even the top three are the ones that are like super egregious. Even if you remove. Ball lightning and what, is it death blow? Death blow is yeah, a good death, one, yeah. death blow or power is really correct right Just now. Those two, to... and you don't need to remove anything from Rogue. Rogue is great. Uh, if you remove those two, like everything's very, very similar. I think just leave Rogue alone. <laughs> Rogue enjoyer. Um, yeah, Asbin, what about you for um? Uh, what I expect to see, what I hope to see for yeah. the future. Um, basically, I just hope that they find a way to implement. A, like the seasonal mechanics into the base game and like growing the base game. I think that honestly what they've done so far has been pretty much fine. Uh, it's season two has been good. The malignant hearts were kind of hit or miss. And I think that really just taking kind of like the greatest hits from each season and then putting them into the base game is how you build an ARPG over 10 years or over five years or something mm -hmm. like that. So there's not really anything super specific that I'd like to see or anything like that. I just want to see them continue taking more risks with each season. And if they don't pan out, then just don't use it next season. And if they do, put it in a core game. Yeah, that's fair. I, I want to see a lot of things. Like, I love things. Things are great. Uh, I want to see a lot more want... bosses. Almost everything yeah. Woody said as well. More of that. I would love to see a button to remove smart loot. Um, I think my f single favorite thing in an RPG, which I think Diablo 4 doesn't do well, um, is me finding an item and just going, wow, I really want to do this now. And I think it's so limited what you can do without ND4. Even some of the uniques from bosses are like class specific, like druid, like can drop only druid things, etc. Um, so I would love to see that. Like, yeah, pretty much the only thing that would make me want to do a new build right now was on Dariel's Visage. Other than that, I didn't find a single item. You're not going to find, like, a really cool random glove, an aspect for a Sork, or anything like that, right? So being able to disable smart loot would be huge for me. I'd love that. Um, there are some, some aspects, just to kind of add on to that a little bit. There's, like, Lucky Hit while Barrier, but that's, like, Sork only as an aspect. So they, they could definitely improve the cross-class of some items to to accomplish that, which I don't think would be even that hard to do. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's my favorite thing in ARPGs. So I would love to see more of that in D4. And I think there's, like, good reasons to have some of it. 
but it would be cool if it was a choice. This is really great for like a casual player that's only going to play one build anyway. Like if they're playing a barb, they don't want to see sword gear. That's fine. But yeah, especially later. And actually something I want to bring up. I was positively surprised because I didn't play season one at all. That was like, I kept seeing my like gear required level scale as I leveled. And I was like, oh my God, they kept that in the game. But then it stopped at level 80 and I was like, oh my God, yes, yeah. that's amazing. I hated that in season zero. Like I found an item at level 100 and it had required level 100. And I'm like, why? Level 80 was a lot of levels in season one though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just. It's good that it changed us. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good, but that's generally the things I want. Just more bosses. I'm kind of disappointed that every boss that's in the base game hasn't been added as a boss already. Like the fact that we got Duriel now, etc. I would have loved to see that like already in the game. Because then, mm -hmm. but if we had like Andariel, Duriel, what's the the other weird one? The oh, guy that was on the Cerberus, what the yeah. hell is his name? Astaroth. 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 Yeah. All of those should have been like already in in my opinion as bosses uh, and then we should have been getting new ones in my opinion that would have been like a great baseline to move forward for so i'm mm -hmm. i would be shocked if we don't get on Dariel, which also was my favorite fight that's why i'm kind of jaded i'm like that was such a cool fight um because we did it in a four-man group and i found uh -huh. bosses were a lot harder with the more people you had like not easier at all whereas when i did a solo i was like oh and Dariel's dead but four-man group at launch Super hard, and I was like, "This is such a cool fight! Can't wait to fight this end game." And that was the really? only time I saw her, and I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah, like wait till season five. <laughs> so I'm hoping we <laughs> get mean, that I, next season. I think they're coming at some point. Yeah, but, yeah. It's funny that you mentioned on Dario because like one of those bosses where I just felt like I was so underwhelmed by this fight because she just it. did nothing. I felt, but it's just like maybe like you know the first time I went through the campaign, I just like blasted down all the bosses, and I still have not done my RP playthrough. Right. Like I just need to choose like a really really slow I'm build, and then I can really uh, enjoy the fights <laughs> yeah yeah it was just because like we we had like we didn't really know what to do with builds and stuff so like some of our builds were pretty bad and four man hp so we were like it was like a proper fight for us we were like i'm chained i'm chained <laughs> like move out move on in for more damage and i was like oh that's so fun so i had a, I had a great time with Andariel. um what do you guys expect to see I, i'm guessing we're not getting a new class until an expansion what do you think will be the first one, or will we get two? It's, it's got to be Paladin, man. Like, I mean, there's no way I'm you can have a Diablo one. game and not have some sort of Paladin, Crusader, or, like, Monk, or, like, even Monk. Monk isn't really the exact same thing, but I think it's going to be a Paladin. Yeah, mm. there's no there's no healer class. The only yeah. class that uses shields is Necros, so there's no, like, Guardian, Defender-type mm -hmm. healer. I think they said there it's not going to be uh a class that has been in another game but yeah like priest cleric use your imagination type of thing yeah something I like that priest or mm, are you excited to roll yet another resistance on your gear wait why holy resist yeah. holy resist <laughs> yeah Monsters don't do holy damage. We yeah, are the holy PvP, ones. Man? Like, you, you, know? you can't yeah. stick holy res in PvP? I mean, what <laughs> the hell? <laughs> yeah, and it's a really good damage type because of that. Wait, this has never been done before. I had to go PvP huh? for a season journey. I, like, butchered some poor, poor, poor little 26. You didn't have to. You oh, could skip on hardcore or what's this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean I didn't have to? Jesus. That's cold-blooded, bro. It was a challenge. He when just he instantly joining. unsubscribed, you know? Oh, I thought I had to. <laughs> no, you only have to do a certain number of the challenges, which is really good because one of them was completely bugged. Um, for me, it wasn't tracking the challenges, and it started tracking them when I was, like, level 50, and one of the challenges is level to 20. So, oh. Ooh. Got yeah. To again. I just did one pen shot. You just got to make a new character, basically. Yeah. Oh. And there was one to to put a piece of gear with five of the same... Um, what are they called? The 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 things for the new mechanic. The, that one uh, didn't work. Traits, like, yeah. Yeah, I okay, cleared well, I it. I I five of the same. So it didn't work. So it's good that you don't have to do all of them. Like they should definitely keep that. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, they're guaranteeing that they all work, which is well, tolerable. That's the way a lot of battle pass tiers work for yeah. for like most games, right? Is it's yeah. just like do whichever ones you think are easier. Yeah. I really like the season journey. I actually, at a lot, I, I quite like that. 
think the rewards were also like pretty good because I, I that's my least favorite thing of d3 like i had there's like a weird subset there's i i don't know if you guys get this in your chats too but i get a lot of like d2 and d3 fans that shit on d4 there's so many people that are like oh d2 is so much better than d4 and i'm like okay I'm like same thing i said to the poe people it's like if you love it so much go play that game it already exists right um yeah. but <laughs> well, it's they like, have been yeah that's why they're pissed off yeah i guess they've been playing the same game for like 30 years but uh yeah a lot of that and i I, I, I the, oh, agree. sorry. The, the thing I was going to say, the thing I hate in D3 was the season journey with the set items. It's like, you finish your season journey, here's your set, here's what to play. You have pretty much no build choice. And I feel like that was like way, way more limiting than like aspects and stuff in D4. Here's how to have fun. Yeah. I like, yeah. I hate, I'm so scared of them adding set items. They were like kind of okay in D2. I'm kind of fundamentally against them. But like D3 set items were like the worst thing I've ever seen. Was it the first season where they did that? They introduced like the thorn set for Crusader, and like everyone was loving it. Um, I think I it was. Remember. Yeah, I think it was. Time ago. Yeah. I think I think if they did basically anything else, it would have not been very widespread. I think they kind of, I think they lucked out with like creating an entirely new build for like a class that wasn't being played outside of a support role at the time, and everyone's just like, "Oh, Thorn's Crusader is so cool." And then they just kind of kept a system that wasn't very good. And I think it was largely because of that. I think the initial reception was good for different reasons. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, it's the other thing also that D3 has like an extremely casual audience, like even more casual than D4 overall. It's, it's like my guess. And it's just like such, it has to become such a power crap game. And, you know, everyone is just expecting all these like this super fast, like sped up progression. And they don't want to grind anymore after like 25 seasons and stuff like that. So it's just that, you know, they kind of kept making it more easy and, and convenient, I guess, with stuff like Hades Gift. But yeah, I think in Diablo 4, this has no place at all. They are kind of doing that a little bit with, like, the season journey aspects that you can get for certain builds, right? Like, for example, last season of the Druid, you get, like, the polarized aspect for free from the season journey, which otherwise is a drop-only, and all of the build-defining mm -hmm. Druid aspects are drop-only, basically. And like this, they're kind of pushing you in a direction, but I mean, you can still eventually find whatever you want and then swap the build, right? It's not like you are stuck with that. In D3, it's like much more like, okay, you, you get to 70 and then you start playing that build because you get it. And then maybe sometime down the line, you farm up the other set. But yeah, I would really also not like to see that in D4, to be honest. Yeah. So, so his gift is just like, you know, give people like more of this, this randomness and this like, you know, choices and decision making. Then this okay, like here have your free, you know, times two hundred multiplier and yeah. Enjoy. More crafting would be good though. I'd love to see more crafting. And I wonder. Yeah, resistance swaps are coming for sure. I think. <laughs> yeah. But like, that, just, that, just that, more in general, that... and and like you said, like corruption. Like I think that's like I generally want ARPGs to be very very different. But that's like a thing I just want in every RPG, like some way to like risk your item, craft it. It's such a fun like at the end feature, and especially since RPGs are so seasonal, like you know you're like kind of last day of playing it. You're like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna play something else tomorrow. Craft everything, and you're like, Oof, but now maybe I want to play a few more days because I hit something crazy. Like that's so yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, and they could actually make it like some really crazy stuff, right? With like higher chances, lower chances, and you know, there could be maybe just corruption that you know gives you like, you know, like ex an extra skill even or whatever, right? So suddenly, or you can trigger certain things, or you know, there could could be a like crazy things, right? In PoE, cor most corruptions are just yeah, outside of like the curse corruptions and the gloves or so, they're like, kind of like you know just stats. But uh, imagine they would uh, actually like build uh, transforming corruptions that uh, that you could like uh, get on your gear. Yeah. Yeah, you can get you can like, get like the extra curses. The max resists are pretty huge. Yeah, okay. Version build. Yeah, a few things for sure, but sometimes you, know. you get skills, and right now the gem sockets are really tight on a lot of builds. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. But I guess you, you you kind of get the point, right? It would be nice if there was actually some some transformative corruptions, basically, much more than just like okay, you get like plus five res or something. Yeah, well, what, what I think it'd be nice if there was some. Yeah, it'd be nice if there was transformative anything. Like I want transformative items, paragon yeah. things, yeah. Uh, glyphs. I, I want that's transformative one thing the game everything. Misses. Yeah. It's like you know, you ever play Vampire Survivors or whatever, and you have like your weapon evolution, and it actually changes what's happening on the screen in like a real way. That's one thing that I wish that Diablo had more of. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, we're slowly getting there. I think with the new Unix, for example, like we talked about this earlier, right? Like mm -hmm. there, there are some some of those new effects now, and they're probably like kind of like dabbling in that. And if they keep adding more stuff like this every season, like in, in like the same in like magnitude of changes, basically, or even more, yeah. then I think we're gonna get to a pretty good point there. Very soon. True. Oh, another question I really want to get your take on is: What do you think is going to be the big boss in the next expansion? Mephisto. Does there have to be one? Yeah. Oh, in the next oh, expansion. Yeah. Oh, I see. I thought yeah. you meant uh, season. Yeah, yeah. No, next expansion. And yeah, there has to be one. Of course, there has to be one. Yes. Yeah. It's your mission. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mephisto for sure. I think. Think so. I think they, they, okay. Yeah. They, they said. I mean, okay. If you look at the campaign, they they have like this this cycle. Like there's like this hatred begets uh, terror begets destruction or something. Like this is like part of the campaign. That's like the only thing I remember from the campaign. And uh, it's it seems like very clearly like you know the like first Mephisto then it's basically the Diablo two combo you know first Mephisto then Diablo then Bail I'm pretty, pretty sure it's gonna go exactly that way with each having their own expansion. Okay, oh. I'm not like super keen on the lore and stuff, but I feel like any expansion for any Diablo game has just introduced some random end game boss that no one even knew existed before. Like oh, they just yeah, like Mal came Bale. up with Bail, yeah. they came up with Mal. Mal, whatever it is in in D three, I think yeah. D four we're gonna have the I don't know, just some other guy. It's gonna be Lucifer or something like. <laughs> okay, I mean, Bale was something out. they came up with, but right, <laughs> like that was like Act three. They were like, but but anyway, I see what you mean. I don't even spice your take. I think the coolest thing would be Diablo is actually the next expansion boss, and Mephisto is our friend now. I mean, even spicier. I'm in for that. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't I know don't if that'll know. happen, but that'd be cool. Yeah, I highly doubt they would do that. I feel like the game is like, it's it's much more like uh, one-dimensional. I'm not sure if they would do something that, that that they would have that much depth. That'd be so cool. What if... I mean, to be fair, I think this is a good point. Like, in, in the entire campaign, Mephisto is actually somewhat helping you, but he does it for his own gain. Yeah. You know, he, he, yeah. he does it like he he's, st he's still evil, and you know he's evil, but you still need to cooperate with him, mm -hmm. and he needs to cooperate with you, and that is actually really cool. Exactly. I, I think like, that that made the story a lot more interesting, and maybe it's gonna keep going like and, that. And he's so tired. Like we have like billions of hours farmed in Diablo two on Mephisto, right? He's like, okay, these guys have farmed me for so long. Clearly, they're gonna keep yeah. winning. I'm just gonna side with them. Maybe like they'll let me be a little bit evil. And we can just like kill everyone together. This is great. I'm tired of getting farmed. He's learned. No one got farmed as much as him, right? Duh. I'm hoping. It could always be like a player choice in the campaign, too. Yeah. I wish mm -hmm. I got a choice to save Lilith. That'd yeah, be that would have been crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not like up to speed with my lore, but is there is there any chance we get like a corrupted Inarius? Uh, uh, no, angels. Denarius. Angels die. No, he's dead. He's dead. Right, but do they really <laughs> die? Yeah, <laughs> demons don't. Angels do. Like they, the, the like the big launch of of D four was like Inarius versus Lilith, and like Inarius is just Gonzo immediately. It's like, hey guys, I'm dead. And then <laughs> Lilith is still kind of around in many different ways in the game, but he isn't. Yeah, well, that's because I. Uh, Okay, I'm not. I'm like ninety six percent sure on this, but I'm pretty sure demons just respawn. They just like come back, and and they themselves come back. But angels, their essence makes a new angel. So a new angels born, but it's not going to be an Arius, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's something like they that. They could also yeah, just be like another could, angel who so. just make it up and just say, well, he respawned anyway. It was the same guy, and <laughs> he's back now. And I think that a corrupted or an twist. evil. Yeah, and Arius would be would be interesting. Yeah, I actually yeah, that but... would be a very against current lore, but it would be a very cool thing. Like Anarius comes back and he's all the angels are like, oh no shit, he's back. This isn't supposed to yeah. happen. It would be funny, but it would be like a pretty big break from their existing lore, I guess. So I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah, you had a cheat death potion. Exactly. <laughs> you scroll of escape. <laughs> Uh, uh, Diablo 4 was merely a setback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Fun. Um, is there any other topics you guys want to explore before we start wrapping things up? 
Oh, I'm chilling, man. I feel like we've talked yeah. about pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I... know, like, how much longer are you guys gonna blast the season? Like, okay, we talked about okay, you get like a season out, a week out of the season or something, but are you actually kind of done, like Crypt, for example, or Asmon or Sis? Like, um, how's maybe that a day or two more. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. I'm done. I got my Uber unique and I did everything I want to. And like I said, with the with the stash stuff and not like feeling a crazy excitement to do a new character, I'm very happy with the the time I got out of D4. So I'm gonna play Blur Skate 3. Ooh. I'm kind of there. Um I mean this kind of goes into what, what we kind of expected out of it. For me, I think if you do two characters, you're getting hardcore a week worth of play out of it. And I don't know if they're in a in a place where they set out a goal and finally tune and hit it right on the nose. I think they just kind of, you know, hope things work out a certain way. But I kind of imagine that this is kind of where they want things. Um, I don't know if you can really expect much mm -hmm. more a D4 season as an ARPG vet playing literally all day long. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think this might be what we can expect in the future. Oh, and the last thing to talk about, Cal level was found. Cal level is in the game now. Well, yeah. we're not sure if it's really found or not. Like, so they Obi found Obi that hovel, and yeah. I think that they will find it, but they're a lot closer, and it seems like things are actually happening. Yeah, it's like a cow closet. I saw it yesterday. Yeah, not a full level. Yeah, actually... I actually watched it a bit back. My chat told me about it. Said he had this guy yeah. on the stream, Asmon, and uh, yeah. I, I listened in a little bit. And it was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, now everyone's farming these cows. But I'm like, yeah, okay, you farm like these like 2,000 cows now, and then you can get your stamina potion. And so you're probably going to be stuck until like season four until we find the next clue. <laughs> so right, it's yeah. probably all for nothing. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, the break point I'm is at 10,000 cows. They're just, they're just not going to make it. They're just not going to be dedicated enough. Yeah, I mean, this, like, the thing is, when people came into my chat while they were doing it, they were like, oh, you only have to kill 666 cows in each region. And I was like, oh, I fell for this oh, scam when I was eight. Like, yeah, no, so it's, when it's I actually was, 666 million. Yeah, exactly. It was like when I was, uh, when I was very young, I was playing Diablo 1, and my friend was like, by the way, have you done the cow level yet? And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, this doesn't sound real. He was like, you need to talk to the cows a hundred times. I was like, okay. I was like, I was like, which one? He was like, oh, the one next to Adria. So I go down the other one. Dip, 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 dip. I click a hundred times and I report back to him. Like, oh, you got me. I believed you. <laughs> and he was like, did you click exactly a hundred times though? If you click too much, it won't open. I was like, <laughs> okay. I went back, click, 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 oh click. And God. then he was like, wow, I made you do it twice. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, I was like eight or nine. But yeah. Uh, so when go. people in my chat were saying this about killing 666 cows, I was like, Flashbacks, not again. Not I'm again. not. I'm not yeah. doing this again. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, I... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I got. I look up here. No, I was just. I was just making a comment. It's it's, it's true. It's the six hundred sixty-six cows. So yeah, I know something is there. I'm I'm linking it in in our chat just so you guys know. I'm not completely making this up. But what do you, what do you, yeah. what is your take on the human blood infused PC that Blizzard said they would uh, give out if 666 people uh, gave a quart of blood to the drive? Is this a good what idea PR wise? Uh, recent Microsoft acquisition, possible liabilities, lawsuits, HIV infused graphics card. <laughs> Any takes? Um, I mean, knowing Blizzard, I'm surprised it's not breast milk confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy! <sighs> oh shit! Okay, I mean, it's good because like, it, it's it's good advertisements because everybody's talking about it. It's a bit weird. It's probably like literally one drop of blood, right? Yeah, I would be surprised if there's more. Um, I want. I was. Ex I was. My my mind was going blood cooled, like okay. water cooling. So it's like. Uh, so I see a video from Crip like was six months from now, like, hi guys, preparing here. My GPU coagulated. It's like <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Non-vegan PC. Yeah. Hey, you couldn't even use this. <laughs> uh that is actually real. I'm reading this right. Now. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. Okay, I mean <laughs> 
why not? But <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. I mean, it gets talked about a lot, but uh, I've not heard about this before. But on the other hand, I mean, there are some people that will donate. I'm pretty sure, and what? it's it's a thematically fitting idea, at least. And I don't it's... mean to have like a, a big opinion. I really like what they're doing with the blood drive. Like getting people to donate more, like, um, is really, really good. Um, I don't know if, they, like, they could have released some sort of MTX or even given exclusive MTX to people that do donate blood. Um, I think the PC thing is maybe like a bit of a miss. Aren't you a gamer? Don't you like everything that has to do with PC? You're letting us down, Ziz. I am letting you down. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. All right. Um, to wrap things up, how about we just give our rating for for D four as it is right now? Oh, okay. we have to. No, it needs the context. We have to rate pre pre season, season, and season two. Without the context, it's pointless. I think that well, like pre season, it wasn't very good. Like whenever the game came out, it wasn't that good. Whenever the first season came out, it was bad. Now, I think that Diablo 4, if you are a casual player, is good. And Diablo 4, if you are a hardcore player, mm. is maybe a bit above mid. Yeah. Woody? Well, I think the game has definitely improved a lot already in like the last few months. So we, we are seeing, seeing season 2 now, and uh, it's like... If you compare season two to season one, you can definitely see a massive jump in the quality and also the quantity of the changes. Like I think overall the patch is just superb uh, for what we have seen from Diablo 4 so far. And if they keep going with like you know similar patches, then very soon we're gonna have a really nice game. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I totally agree. Like from a casual perspective, it's it's really good. From the high-end perspective, I mean, I don't run out of things to do. It's just because I'm someone who likes to make many builds in a season. Like, you know, I'm going to play, like, 15 different builds. And, you know, I'm going to, like, just space it out over the weeks. And I have stuff to do. And, you know, I like exploring the different classes and all that. So it's kind of okay. But, of course, like, long-term, we need, like, a lot more, like, towards the tail end of the progression. We need more the leaderboard stuff and what we talked about, basically. But, yeah, in general, I think comparing it to the previous patches, we are in a, in a really good spot right now. So if they keep kind of like keep going in that direction, then we fall. Yeah. Right. Um, well, in my initial review of, of D4, I gave the game a six, and I was a little bit uh, optimistic with the changes that they made, because I thought if they're changing everything, that might be because they really thoroughly tested everything and then changed everything. But actually, it turned out that when the game launched in preseason, there were a lot of problems. Uh, every good build had some crazy bug, like crazy bug. Like every single necro build was taking advantage of guaranteed lucky hit bugs. So it's like just completely crazy stuff. The mm -hmm. best builds were just the most bugged builds. So I, I don't know if I'd even rate it a six at the end um, of yeah. seeing how that turned out. And somehow season one was uh, a bit worse. I certainly the, the patch notes were, were worse, but playing the game, I don't know if it felt that much worse. Um, I felt like uh, playing the game wasn't wasn't as bad as the patch notes maybe made it seem. Um, for season two, going through the changes, uh, I was a bit uh, reluctant to be optimistic in a way. It's like, hey, these yeah. changes look pretty good, but I don't know. Right. I've, I've been um, here before. Yeah, coming in from from the last preseason, last two seasons, preseason and season one, where just all the best stuff is completely bugged. Like I, I think in preseason, I, I I estimated there's over a thousand bugs with skills across all the classes. Like just an insane amount of bugs. Like no, nothing really seemed to work how it did. It took like the most hardcore theory crafters like two months of preseason to actually like figure out what affects overpower. And then, like, season two, it's like, guys, we're redoing it, and it's going to be good now. And I'm like, we'll see. Okay, it's like, <laughs> I'm not like, yeah, it's like, no, 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 no. We'll, see, we'll see is the answer. But uh, I've actually been playing some surprise with season two. I'd probably rate it at least an eight. And um, I really think they, wow. like, now they're kind of at the point where they need to figure out, like, how to deliver on this consistently. 
and with a bit more fine tuning on the balance and with a few less bugs. And yeah, I just I don't know how much of, of an effort they had to get here. Um, like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what stops were pulled, what people were pulled off other projects to make season two happen. I don't know if this is something they will be delivering every season, but I hope it is. Yeah. Oh. I would rate it like for me personally, and obviously like I am a no lifer, so it's it is important. The game isn't really for me. Um, you're not supposed to like play this for like thirty hour sessions, I guess. Uh, I would uh, rate season zero a four out of ten. I think uh, when it all comes to it, I didn't play season one. I think that was really good for me and really healthy because as somebody that no lifes it, if I was playing every season, that was maybe a bit uh, not a lot to do. And I'm very happy with the direction they're they're going. Uh, so I, I give season two a, a six out of ten for me. Like I think they've added a lot of things. I think it needs a lot more for people like me, but I I think it'll get there. So I, I give current one a six out of ten. Like I I had a lot of fun, but like I'm already out of stuff after what, four or five days now. So just want more stuff to do basically. But very happy with what they did this season. Just needs more stuff. And oh, by the way, for context, six out of ten for me is very high. I give Poe an eight. Wow! How do you give it an eight? You put thirty thousand hours in that game. Yeah, it's um, an eight. It's all right. You know, it's whatever, bro. I give some some <laughs> seasons a nine. It's just because I play the game so much that I give Calandra a five and like Sanctum and Sentinel a nine. Awful. But it's like my I, favorite game. Like I mostly play RPGs because I'm a streamer. If I wasn't a streamer, I would only be playing PvP games, like degenerate PvP okay. games, like Darkfall Online, etc. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to give PUE an 8 uh, from your perspective because if you're like such a hardcore blaster and you do it every day and it's kind of like, you know, your life, mm -hmm. then you also see the, the downsides of the game, right? You see, yeah. like, the, uh, you, know, you get to experience them, right? Where like a casual might just like ignore them and he's going to have fun with like the fun parts of the game. Yeah. Like the, the best game of all time is Darkfall Online. And then just generally love PUP games like Daisy, Tarkov. PUP is so fun. There's no PvP in the RPGs. There's some in D4, but I'm like, I am hard to right, I killed a new a new player in the PvP I... zone because it was a challenge. Okay, yeah. but <laughs> I wish there was a way to arrange like tournaments. Yeah, maybe we're gonna get some something for PvP at some point. Who knows? I hope right? so. I mean, it's probably it's probably not a priority, and definitely yeah. it should not be a priority right now. But eventually, when the game is actually like in a spot where we're like all happy, then you know why not? You know, invest a bit of the like, site development time on on some pvp stuff oh well, you know that yeah. could definitely help. awesome but yeah i think i think that's all we have for for this podcast we can just end with shout outs and again like huge thank you to all of you for joining me and uh yeah getting asmin to reply i was a bit of a trouble but we're I'm glad you're all here hey <laughs> you know every it's it's like an rng thing like every 10 messages is a reply <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad to be on. I'm, thanks for having me. I had a good time. And uh, yeah, I'm always glad to come on and talk about video games. Awesome. Woody, where can people find your channel? Well, you see my name here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Woody Joe. So um, this is where I have my channels on Twitch, on YouTube. I have a Discord server with like 90K members. You can find that as well if you want to be in touch. And... Yeah, from my perspective, it was really fun to hang out here with you and talk about the game. Uh, excited to do this again. And um, yeah, let's see what the future holds. Yeah. Crip. And uh, this has been your local Kriparian here. Uh, thank you guys for listening to us ramble collectively. And uh, hopefully you've had some value and learned a few things about uh, our opinions and have made them your own. Yes. And Asmin? Uh, you guys want to follow me? That, that'd be cool. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. That's about it. Awesome. And I am Zizarin on everything. Again, thanks for all watching, and we'll see you for Season 3. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you later. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you all like it. And as I said, I think that Diablo 4 Season 2 for a hardcore player is about what Zizarin said. It's a 6. And if you are a casual Andy, a dad gamer, if you have gray hairs in your beard, I think that Diablo 4 Season 2 could very well be an 8 or a 9. 
I said it. Who's mad? That's what I think. That's what it be. That's what it is.